where we left off last session, you had run into a uh, an interesting creature nicknamed the Mementar, which I just love that nickname. Thank you, Chahista. Um, a Minotaur who seemed a little off, didn't speak, wore a golden mask, and wrote all over their body to remember things, and specifically left with two things written on him, the name of Tikaros and the name of Adrastos. And uh, Tikaros, if I remember correctly, you ended up taking a uh, mark from him. He uh, drew the yes. symbol for Minotaur on your arm. Yes. So. All right. Well, we are down two players this week, but they told me what they would have done in this situation is they wanted to go along with the Minotaur for a ways and make sure that he was going on the proper path. Adrastos was a little worried about the map he had drawn and wanted to make sure that the Minotaur got off on the right direction and uh, basically stayed out of trouble. Which leaves the four of you alone to protect the body of the Sphinx, the Oracle, in the back of the cart, and continue on your journey, journey to Melitus. And it's, it's a fairly quiet journey the rest of the way. Uh, you don't run into any more goblin trail because you've pretty much... Uh, wiped out anything that was there, and the two survivors ran away and most likely told every other goblin, hands off, let these guys alone. So day passes, night passes, and just basic road travel uh, continuing on. Is there anything you would like to specifically do during this time? I'll take that as a <laughs> yes, Tigris. I just thought of something. If we have time, at some point during the day, while we're traveling, I'll be sidling up to Agrios and kind of looking up and saying, I've made something for you, Agrios. Can I ride with you a while? Very well. All right. On my back. Yes. She jumps up uh, very gently um, and kind of leans over and just chats to him about this uh, like hairdo that she's been working on overnight. And Agrios, like, yes, I know you're not going to believe me, but your battle has inspired me, your battle, your angriness. And I've just, look, and she kind of spins around so you can see it. And she's done this knotted kind of plait all the way down her back. This is your battle rage, Platt. Can I do one for you? <clears throat> Come on, we're just traveling. It's boring. I don't believe in binding my hair, but... A little uh, one? A little one. All right, a little one. Yes. Ah, and she just spends the rest of the day just working on this knotted, twisted mass of hair, and that's it. <laughs> you, said, you said a little one. But I want to know, he's got a pretty good mane going here. Haha, <laughs> see, play on words. Uh, how much of his hair do you actually uh, move into this? How big, how big and noticeable is this? Well, she starts off very small. She's trying to keep to her word. But then she gets just a little bit enthusiastic. And if he doesn't stop her, it'll be a nice, beautiful, scented, kind of thick battle plait. That looks just proud and amazing. Excellent. Excellent. Just see how it feels for one day. You can take it out after that. All right. Um, I don't feel any angrier yet. All right, give it time. Do you feel angrier? Yes. Ooh, exciting. That's why I wanted to do it. You're helping me too. I hope we find something to let it out on. <gasps> Let's see, huh? Let's. And then he'll, he'll, he'll speed ahead a little forward to everyone else from there to see if there's anything ahead. All right. As you, as you do this to pull ahead, uh, the horses actually, you know, try to move ahead with you because they see you <laughs> as part of 
the Ptolemaeus, mm-hmm. you've got control of them because you were, yeah. you were driving at this point. I'll, I mean, I'll just I'll just lead on. I'm I'm getting a little tired of the road myself, but something kind of sticks to to the back of my mind ever since the last question I had with Vara. But I think yeah, no, actually no. I'll I'll, I'll keep to myself for now. Okay. So the next day joins into the next, and it is now four days that you've been on the road. So four days after the collapse of the temple, Heliod on the solstice. And you're traveling in a ways, and you're, you're getting to the point now that the side road and the main road are going to have to merge. And as you pull up in this area, um, about probably three miles outside of uh, Melitus, you can see up ahead a company of soldiers and the smell of, of burning, burnt wood, burnt flesh, reaches your nostrils. Are you going to continue to proceed forward or stop? I think so I, I'm going to say I I'm going to say you're probably about 200 yards to 300 yards away from this at this point. Um, at this point, I think I'll stop the wagon and the and just go. Uh, Agrios, there's yes. that smell. I'm pretty sure you're yes. familiar with it. Without without actually disturbing anything at this point, is it okay if you would help us? Scout and make sure. With pleasure. They find disturbing. No ill will to our caravan. Very well. And as soon as he leaves, I'll just be like, I made a mistake. I, I'm pretty sure I made a mistake there. <laughs> does Tikaro stay on his back or does uh, she stay behind when he goes to scout? What she would do, she'd scamper off and she'd go, perfect chance to practice my stealthy skills and she'll kind of go off into any kind of cover and she'll just try stealthing ahead with you but not riding with you i see okay agrios will not attempt any stealth he will just ride ahead or (laughs) run ahead i should say okay are you heading straight towards the soldiers and sure yeah probably okay all right uh, so you come, uh, and you said you were moving fast, so I want to make sure you're at a gallop. Is that correct? As he gets nearer, he would slow to more of a trot, I suppose. Okay. How how far out? You're 300 yards away. How far out are you going to slow down? <sighs> hmm. Let's say, let's say about 150 feet. Okay, so you come charging in on this, and at the sound of your hoofbeats, uh, several soldiers take their shields and their spears and make a wall. And Ah. when you slow down, uh, spears still up. Who goes there? Hmm. And Tikaros, I need a a, uh, stealth check from you, please. Yes. Practicing my stealthiness. 14. <laughs> All right. Uh, who, who goes there? And they're looking specifically at you, Agrios. They call me Agrios. I have come without ill will. Charging up on a group of soldiers is never a good idea, Agrios, unless you are Mm. wanting to seek battle. I... (sighs) I apologize. I, uh... What business have you here? Wait. I am scouting ahead to see. Are you with the wagon over there? Uh, are they talking about? Are they indeed talking there, about he, our wagon? He specifically or point. He specifically points to you, your guys' wagon. That I am. I'm here on their behalf. 
and you hear them say, and Tikaro, since you've been able to sneak in a little bit closer, you hear as one of them leans to the other one, that must be the other wagon. Um, go ahead and pull forward your wagon. Can I roll insight on why these guys want the wagon? Forward, Absolutely. If they're, if they're like, yep. and if they are getting ready I'm, to attack us or if they're at ease. All right. And Tikaros, I'm going to give credit that you could have moved in a little bit closer. So how far away do you want to be from them? Because you're hiding pretty well. Okay. I would be as close to Agrios as I could be, but still remaining hidden. Okay. So very I'm close to him. I'm going to put you a little ahead of him. So if he's 150 feet out, you're maybe 125. So you're definitely still within. I could run and get on his back range, but a little exactly. bit closer. <laughs> you read my mind. <laughs> I'm getting that to is, know your character. That is a lucky 13 on insight. Okay. Um, I'm going to take your insight and put that a little bit with what you can see past the wall that they made. Mm. Uh, and with them mentioning that must be the other wagon, you kind of take a look and the burned out husk of a wagon very similar to the wagon that your group has is in the middle of the road i see he smiles and says i will tell them and then starts to head back all right Icarus, what are you going to do? Hmm. I want to go and see if I can sneak up on that burned out wagon and take a peek in there. Okay. I would also like to ask if I could, sorry, how many soldiers there were, if I could get uh, a rough head. There are, there are 20 soldiers, five of whom made the shield wall. Ooh. The rest seem to be uh, busy around this uh, burned out wagon. Uh, Tikaros, no, no, no problem. Tikaros, uh, go ahead and roll me a stealth and we'll see how much closer you can get in. Okay. And uh, would there be any trees around? Because I think she would try, if there's too many people there's... around the wagon. Yeah. Okay. There are, there are low bushes and some trees and things around. Absolutely. You're moving into the tree. nicer, greener pastures here. So. Okay. Ooh, that's not as good. That's a 12. Actually, there's a lot of distraction going on. So they may, someone may have looked in your direction thinking that they heard something, but no one has, has done anything that lets you know they know you're there. Okay. So you have gotten in a lot closer. And let's say there's a tree uh, about 175 feet out. Let's get you really close. 75 feet out, there's a tree that you're able to get up in and take a look around. Yeah. So I would just try and get vantage. And just see if I can see any kind of detail what's in there to take clues back to my new friends. Okay. Uh, give me a perception check. Okay. Perception. 11. Okay. As you look around, you can see the wagon, which of course looks very similar to the wagon. You also see the two horses. They're very similar to the horses. You have very similar coloring to the two horses that are attached to your wagon. Um, unfortunately, they both appear to have been mauled by something very large as their corpses lie in front of the wagon. Uh, the wagon is burned out. The canopy that covered it is gone. And you see a couple of feathers that remind you of the wings of the oracle. What? That's crazy, she says to herself. And if there's nothing else to be seen, she'll scamper back to the group. Okay, so Agrios is going to make it back before you, of course. So Agrios, you are back at the wagon. Um, I believe they have burned another wagon, and I also believe they intend to burn ours. They instructed me to pull forward. Shall we slaughter them all? 
How, how, how many of them are there? Twenty. They're outnumbered. What is it? Uh, five to one? Yes, that's um, a little bit much, don't you think? I like the odds. I, I, I don't. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and add that. I, I do not like those. <laughs> um, I, unfortunately, I am doubtful that they are trying to do something benevolent to us if there is uh <clears throat> but are you sure they're the ones that burned out the ca the, the wagon and not just investigating it or something i'm not sure no where's tikaros is she not here with you no i thought perhaps perhaps her batter plat really worked and she's out there fighting them right now we should join her i I think she's just been quite sneaky. She's rather small um, and nimble, so <laughs> well, pretty sure that's what she's doing. Not fighting, which I don't think we should do at any point. I think we should avoid that um, wholeheartedly. Oh, I don't like that. What do you mean? Why would we avoid that? We have precious cargo, and two of us have gone on a uh, merry quest to help our friend, mm. and. Um, they will be rather disappointed if we don't show up next uh, next time we see them, I think. I would think so as well. Let's, hopefully, if we go at a slower pace, and approach at a slower pace, we'd maybe Tikaros would be able to come back s somewhere if she was being sneaky. If we had a little bit more information about everything. I'm being this close, being this close to the pole, I don't think the soldiers are going to be too antagonistic against travelers. I hope. But if we, if they are, and that we must fight, then we wouldn't be able to avoid it. Yes, truly. Well, I suppose uh, we know which option we're hoping for. Not fighting, yes. Oh. Uh, right. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna slowly, just as slow as I can, kind of eke the wagon forward, like kind of complying but not complying completely. Okay. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, Tikaros comes jaunting out of the bushes. Yeah, you know, she made her way back slowly, and then she just kind of da 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 <laughs> comes running out to the group. Uh, and I'm assuming immediately jumps onto Agrios's back because you know you you never said that you couldn't get back. I mean, it was kind of a temporary thing. So. Battle plats, Agrios. I followed you, but you didn't see me, did you? I didn't. Excellent. Did you okay. kill any of them? Okay, not yet, but, ah. but I don't know. There's something weird going on. I took a look in the burned wagon. There were feathers in there and horses that look exactly like our horses. It's like so similar to our situation that I thought, I need some more brains on this. What's going on? It was like there was even a sphinx in there. An oracle was in there and burned and the horses were dead. But so... Did it look like the soldiers killed the horses, took the sphinx, and burned out the wagon? That's one explanation. Well, I don't know if we can trust them. Could you, could you, did, did you see any spears, swords put to the horses? You saw the horse corpses, right? Yeah. So anything? Burned. I think. I could go back and have another look. Oh, well, probably. Don't, we don't have to deal with it that way. Could there be a possibility that, since it is a day of celebration that not necessarily is just in one pole, that, and there are multiple temples, and potentially multiple oracles, that the incident that befell 
where we were in the Atlantean happened in other places as well. And mm -hmm. that there may be some force that's still actively pursuing these oracles. That is so smart. That could be it. In which case we sh We could only do so much against the overwhelming odds of the soldiers, but if they are benevolent, we need to get to them as before whatever ill befell the other wagon happens to us. As you've been rolling forward and having this conversation and gotten a little bit closer, um, they appear to be paying more attention to you, and there seems to be a little bit of uh, maybe impatience for why you're taking so long to pull up. <laughs> So one one of the, the soldiers um, steps out and starts walking your direction. And as you get closer and the soldier gets closer to you, uh, you recognize the uniform of the Reverend Army. This is the army of Melitus. This is the guard. And based on the shoulder insignia and drapings, this is probably an officer that is approaching you. Okay, I kind of sigh uh, a breath of relief and then just greetings. Um, sorry, uh, we had a little bit of a an accident with one of the spokes, and I didn't want to risk damaging it, so I was rolling a little slow. I see, and the. Mid-aged, young but mid-aged uh, young woman uh, looks in the back of the wagon, you know, steps back and kind of looks in the back. And so you're the other wagon from Melitus. Um, I mean, from from the Atlantid. I was, I was told that we were the only wagon, but we are from the Atlantid. Yes. Well, of course, if you had known there was a decoy wagon, you would have acted differently, wouldn't you? Probably not, fearing for our own safety. Yeah. But I suppose, and I kind of look forward, uh, the decoy worked or not? <laughs> uh, you misunderstand. You were the we decoy. are the decoy. Unfortunately, someone discovered that the true oracle was in that wagon. We are still collecting information about it, but we, we will take you in to see the council. But in, she looks in the back and Eurymedes has, well, obviously you didn't know. Um, one moment, and she jogs back over and then jogs back with one of the other soldiers who climbs up into the back of the wagon and places his hand down the oracle and stops about midway down the oracle's body because very tall, mutters a few words, and you catch that this is a dispel magic that is being done. And the body of the oracle melts down into the shape of a young mage dressed in basic robes who is sweating profusely as they have been holding this shape for some time. As you have uh, watered it, <laughs> attempted to heal it, <laughs> <laughs> and taken other actions against it. And slowly the, the mage sits up and... Oh. oh, any food. I'm afraid the good berries have worn off. Grab well, some you food are, out of there. Oops. You are so impressive. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I knew something was up, and you and you managed to, to keep it up anyway. That's... I, that's wow. <laughs> I was saying that. I, you must have heard me. Um, I was saying it must be quite a powerful magic user to do something like you did. 
Um, sure. So young. Thank you. Yes. Um, thank you. Um, we should be getting getting back into town. Um, I need to report. Uh, they stopped along the way and uh, fought some goblin raiders and dealt with uh, one of the returned. Wait a minute, where are the other two? The, re the returned? Do you mean the one with the mask? Yes. Where are the other oh. two who were with the wagon? I believe they went with, with, with him. At least to make sure that he's safe. Well, I'm glad no one attacked the wagon. What would have happened to me if they were gone and you'd have been attacked? Ah, uh, we have to an Agrios. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, you were the decoy in the first place. You took That doesn't the job. mean I have a death wish. Everyone I was told you were competent. That. Well, we are competent. We're the ones that are alive. Not that one. Alive? And he, for the first time, looks out and sees the other wagon. He was unaware. Oh, my. Then the oracle and the two soldiers just kind of, you know. But you wish you were dead now, Eurymedes. <laughs> Wow, okay. <laughs> no, but I'm afraid we all may be. What happened? We're still collecting information. Um, okay, you, um, what, pointing to Ptolemaeus, what, what is your name? Ptolemaeus. Ptolemaeus. Ptolemaeus, we need you to... Take the wagon uh, into Meletus. Um, I will send Eurymedes and two of the guards will go with you. Uh, report immediately to the Twelve. <sighs> All right. Fine. I'll just ride up the wagon. It, um... Does it specifically have to be any member of the Twelve? What? They're waiting for a report. They are all gathered. Right. I'll just kind of disgruntled, a little bit disgruntled, uh, continue forward. All right. And so two guards are dispatched to ride with you. They ride in the back with your remedies. And but they are on guard at the time. One of them is an archer, the other one has a spear at the ready, and they are constantly watching, looking forward and backward and skyward. So you just follow the uh route and you end up. Uh, at the main gates of the city. And I actually have a map. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. I want to see it. Yes. Uh, David Lopez, uh, DM's Guild, has done some wonderful maps. Oh, nice. And I highly recommend them. Oh my gosh. Oh, they come Very cool. Really Roll 20 is blurry on my side. Hopefully the map's not too blurry on your side. Yeah, it's it's blurry for me, but th it happens sometimes when it's high res. Okay. It's yeah, there it goes. It's not too bad. It's, it's in, so. Yeah, this is a very, very large and very detailed map. And let's see. If so I big, I don't even know map. where we are. <laughs> there we go. So where you are coming in at is going to be on the far end up here coming in off of the plains so i just okay. pinged the area and where you want to go the hall of the 12 is on the very far side of town <laughs> so i just pinged it and let me get the map i'm trying to shrink the map for everybody uh watching the stream but yeah there we go 
but you're headed down to the Council of the Twelve there, the Hall of the Twelve. As you make your way through the town, which you know it fairly well, you at least know the roads, Ptolemaeus, since you've been here. Yeah. Uh, the place is bustling. Uh, there's lots going on, many people in the streets, uh, but they do clear the way as you come into the area. And once you make your way through the city gates, uh, the soldiers remove the canopy from it. And so they are riding in the back. And when people see the soldiers, they definitely kind of move out of the way and make it clear for you to go on your journey through. Uh, I'll just turn to one of the soldiers. Um, I'll just be like, do we really need to keep the wagon or can we leave it somewhere? I, I'm not really used to this grand procession that we have here. And where would you like to leave the wagon? And then who is going to take care of it and who will care for the horses? And then that would be a delay to get you to the 12 who have been waiting. We don't need two of you. One of you can, can hold on to our horses. The, the other one could take us there. It would be at least easier that way. My orders, our orders, are to accompany you to the Twelve. You do not have the authority to change our orders. Right. Okay. Fine. Grand concession. Procession it is. And you continue on, and there's lots of celebration going on. Uh, first off, we've just passed the solstice a few days ago, but we are also approaching the end of the month, the end of Polydrisian, and we're about to enter the new month of Thrambion, which is also the start of the Ireland Games. So there is a lot of celebration going on here getting ready, many people getting ready for a journey to go to the games. But there's a procession that makes its way from Meletus to Aroa. So it's going to be quite <laughs> the couple of days here in town. But you're able to make your way down. You make your way through the main square, the main Corsair, and back around. And you eventually pull up into the small village that is the area of the Twelve, um, where their hall is and around it is surrounding homes and that serve as their offices and their houses. All right. They hand off the, the horses and wagon to someone there who immediately takes it to the stable or this facility, and they escort you up to the front doors and open the doors for you, and then stand there and wait for you to enter. Probably ought to have asked sooner, but who are these 12? Basically, um, let's, let's walk and talk. Right. Basically, the 12 great, oh, what do they call them, philosophers or anything? They're, they're the ones that, that their, their word is gold here, mm. pretty much. Some of them are a little bit uh, smarter than others, and some of them are a little bit bullheaded, unfortunately. Well, like that's that. why there's 12 of them. N not the same way. No, don't take me seriously. Don't take me literally on that one, Agrios. It is not the right kind of bullheaded. In any case, if they start arguing amongst themselves with what we're going to say to them, don't start any violence yet. Please. Well, and I won't start. What exactly are we going to say to them? Are we... Do we have any reason to say anything other than the truth, or no? Uh, there is. Is there anything we need to omit? I don't think there is. At least, I mean, I'll, I'll just kind of look at the mage. There, 
everything that we could not have omitted, he would still know. Why would you lie to the Twelve? Oh, I, I, I just, I don't know if these are good people or not. They're good people, they're, they're the ruling body of Mel- they are elected by the people. They are the, the best representatives of all of us. I'm not from Melitis. What do I give a shit? Because That's they're it. the ones who keep stability around. They're, they're the ones who... They keep yep. peace in the area. They, they I, solve the... I, I I've don't, grown I, up. I don't believe you people. I, I, I've grown up with um, the, the, the plundering pirating sort so uh, a, a governing body is not exactly uh what i typically see as good folk but um i'm new to the area and i'll give it a chance i just i just wanted to make sure that uh i didn't say something i wasn't supposed to no there isn't anything that you're going to say that you're not supposed to just say anything that comes to mind they are elected, and they're the best representatives. They'll understand. Right. Just, just be honest, share the information that you have, and maybe they can determine what is going on. By the way, did they say anything to you about what happened to the other wagon? As we went by, it was, it was burned, and it looked like the, the animals had been, I don't know, Gnaw that by something. There's that, and then also whatever's in the cart is gone with feathers everywhere. Oh. So that was that was the real body of the orc. Yeah. She's indeed obviously now lost to us. Well, Agrius, didn't you get a good look? Or Tigaros, maybe? Tigaros was the one. Yes. I saw, yeah, we're just banned off. I don't know. And they said they were still looking for information. So they didn't really tell us much, did they? More so that I'm curious whether or not they had a similar, a similarly um, eclectic party guarding the real oracle, or if they were trying to be as low low-key and ins- inconspicuous as possible, because that might have made your band plan backfire quite a bit. You approach the main council chamber, and you can hear speaking coming from inside. Eurymedy stops and quickly cleans up his clothes, a little prestidigitation, and makes his sparkle and everything. Gets his hair just right. Uh, just just to spite one particular person, I'm gonna press the digi- digitation like dirt on my all over like the bottom of my like soles, clothes and everything. And just so you're like tracking dirt, or <laughs> are you leaving not, a not, trail, or is it just not on your specifically <laughs> not specifically tracking dirt because I still have a little bit of respect for the place, but just the thought of potentially tracking dirt might make someone a little bit uh, annoyed. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, The doors open, and as you step inside, you see the. the, It's kind of like a a round seating area, and all the seats are on the same level, but one of the chairs is a little more ornate. And the person sitting in that chair raises her hand. And the discussion stops. She issues forward. Come on, come in. I'll walk in. You are the group from Neolanton who. The decoys. The decoys. And with that, you hear kind of a chuckle come from one of the other chairs. And looking over, yes, you recognize it is Dracios. Yes. 
Oh, the Dr- yes. Dracula is the one that that was um, chuckling. They, they laughed. Yes. Okay. Um. Yes, I'm. I'm sorry about that, but we. And she looks over at Dracios. We made the decision that a decoy was the safest route, and you were recommended. And she kind of sideways glances at Dracios. You were specifically recommended to head it up. Great. Excellent. Well, maybe I should have been recommended to, to be helping the actual Oracle, seeing as how we're alive and the other wagon didn't make it. Well, tell us what happened on your journey. We're trying to determine how they figured out which wagon was the correct one in the first place. We assumed that if they did anything, they would destroy both if they found there were two. Well, the journey itself, not much of it has happened, but we were on alert, alert enough to notice that there were tracks of a minotaur and some goblins that went through our path. We now know, and I turned towards the mage, that the minotaur is among the returned. And the goblins poking, prodding, harassing the returned, we decided to stop them. I kept my sights on the wagon at all times, made sure that the oracle, I I kind of point at the mage, was safe behind me. Besides that, nothing else of note. The person sitting to the right of the the obvious leader of the council leans forward. You say a returned. A minotaur with a gold mask. And you just happened upon them? You hadn't seen them any before that or after? They just happened to be on your route? Where did they come from? Yeah. The tracks ch- made it seem that they went straight through. Straight through Straight through our camp. Wait, they went through your... They went through your camp and you didn't realize they were there? Well, I think we see what the problem is. What's the problem? The fact that we're alive? Or... The fact that you are not competent to do the job if someone went straight through your camp and you didn't even know they were there. Regardless of whether or not competency competency comes in play with how much we know the fact of the matter is we had the strength to back up whatever happened and that is the reason why we're standing in front of you today right here and not the oracle with this Dracios clears his throat the reason you are standing here today is because You let this group go through your camp. They obviously determined that it was a decoy. And then they went and told whomever. Actually, before you say anything else stupid, I would like to say that all of that group is dead except for one who's currently being escorted by two of our group. Thank you. Wait a minute. What is... Wait a minute. Is that... You are a follower, you follower of Mogus, aren't you? An oracle of his, yes. An oracle of his. Yes. Does that offend you? Well, one, one moment, please. Can we bribe? The young man stands up. Read back to us the account of what happened to the first wagon. He flips through pages. Um, early this morning, um, from the constellation of Mogus, a large flaming axe blew down from the skies and hit the wagon, bursting it into flames. 
and from those flames, giant claw-like hands came forward and slayed the horses. And then there was a bright light above the wagon, and the symbol of Mogus was shown in bright colors. Does your scribe also have the accounts of what happened in Neil Lantern? That's part of why you're here. Dracius leans forward. I understand you were involved. After, on the aftermath, there was golden fingers, I would say, and whatever palm it looked resembled anything the golden light resembled anything maybe heliod would have done the temple was smashed by this palm the oracle injured along with it if you're talking about godly celestial incidents it would be fairly simple to see if Someone is imitating the gods. Something is imitating, imitating the gods. Imitating the gods! <laughs> you have a dead oracle, and you have a dead... How many dead were they? There was many dead. Did you keep count, Agrios? Uh... Hmm. No. But golden hands crushing... Heliod's temple... Does that sound like one specific god? Or couldn't the other, the battle axe, come back for that as well? Well, you know, an angry Heliod did destroy a lantern. Maybe he was displeased? With his own oracle. I can see where people would be displeased with their oracle. He specifically looks at Agrios. Hmm. So tell us, yet... Oracle of Mogus, what do you think of how the wagon was destroyed? Was it the hand of Mogus? As amusing as that would be, no, I don't believe so. Mogus himself spoke through me and instructed me to find whoever is pinning this on the gods. Pinning this on the gods. <laughs> yes. Is that funny to you? Uh, it is to presume that someone has the power of the gods to impersonate the gods. Wouldn't you have to be a god? Oh, wait, let me get... Are you... You're accusing, um, Phoenix, maybe, that, that he's doing this. Um, or some, someone, some other god has decided, oh... Karametra. Karametra has grown tired of, of the fields and the feasts and has decided to destroy temples and kill oracles. Agrios, at this point, would use thaumaturgy to raise his voice. I have done nothing but repeat the words of a deity, words which you are mocking and laughing at openly. As soon as Perhaps you do you this and you... As soon as you do this and start speak, and I'm going to stop you for this reason, it's booms and then immediately dampens back down to almost a whisper. Ah. Uh -huh. Hmm. Good trick. As aggressive, my, as aggressive as my companion could be at times, there I have no reason to believe that. He is anything but fanatical for the words of his god. And if his god tells him that the gods are being impersonated, that is what it is. One of the council members stands up and walks over, and when he gets a little closer, uh, you recognize Alitas. I think we should listen. What were you saying? And please. Don't raise your voice in here. Nobody likes yelling. Well, I presume you like yelling. No one in the council chambers prefers yelling. 
So if you would keep your volume, I would love to hear what you have to say. Only that if Mogus were responsible, he would be eager to take responsibility. After all, he relishes in bloodshed and destruction. The fact that he is insulted at being impersonated so suggests to me that there truly is some force pretending to be the gods. When and I would be very careful not to mock his words. Hmm. I received it in Neolantin when determining whether or not to go with this group. So prior to your journey, and prior to the incident this morning that destroyed the wagon. Indeed. And you said that if Mogus did such a thing, he would be proud of it and he would not hide from it, correct? I believe so, yes. Is not placing his symbol above the act, not claiming it? Hmm. Only if he did that. Well, but you have nothing to say that he didn't, and you presume, based on a conversation you apparently had prior to, well, pardon me, a message, not a conversation. I didn't mean to misrepresent your communication with the gods. Uh, you were given a message prior to that. That does not mean that that message carries throughout all actions through all time, therefore, correct? So it is very possible that Mogus could have done this. While you may have the assumption that he did not, based on a conversation of previ previously had, there is nothing that states Mogus did not destroy the oracle, possibly in anger, over whatever situation you say makes him appear to have been uh, impersonated. Unfortunately, there's no... Mogus isn't a god of secrets. Mogus isn't a god of deception. None... It would benefit him nothing to have the Oracle destroyed. In fact, it is more bane than a boon to have that wagon destroyed. Yeah, and yes, you I... Sorry. I, I just wanted to, to quickly interrupt. Um, we were brought here to, I believe, help be a part of a plan that we weren't even entirely privy to and are now providing you with valuable information. And I feel like this entire conversation has been either jeers at our inability or implications in in something that none of us or or would be a part of um i just i don't i don't really understand why we're providing you a service if you're just going to insult us we have genuine reason to believe that there is someone implicating the gods or or, or personating them in some way and you're simply not hearing us out, then why hear us at all? Let us be on our way, and you form whatever opinions you form, and we'll take care of it. Rakios stands up. Young lady, the determination of whether what you have to say of, is of value or not is based upon us. You are here to answer questions. And at this point, Alidas, uh, excuse me, Drakios, it is my determination whether the information is of value. And with this, <laughs> the, the head of the council raises their hand again. Elitus, I think it is appropriate for you to gather this information outside of the chambers. We will then rejourn here and we will discuss whatever your findings are. And the rest, you will stay in town, pointing to all of you. We will put you up in a house. And you will remain here until we have done answering your questions. Understood? Yes. Sounds fair. Good. Uh, I would like says, to point out, though, I'll just, I'll just kind of raise my hand. I would like to point out that our current predicament or situation shouldn't stop us from being rewarded for safely escorting your decoy. To Melitus. 
with that Drake, he goes, Oh, the peasant wishes to be paid for his service. I provided a service. I should be paid. The head of the council stands up. It will be taken care of. Thank you. Aletus puts his arms kind of to encompass the group. Please, come with me. Let's adjourn to uh, my offices where we can have this discussion. Gladly. And he will escort you out of the main council chamber. And as soon as you are out and the doors close, bickering starts. You can tell Dracios kicks it off and there's just some bickering back and forth and you can hear bits and pieces about is there any worth uh, you all failed the mission. You 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 didn't protect the oracle. You know, just all this back and forth. Let us just. Uh, I'll come just on. come along. As we're walking, I'll just turn turn to Agnes. That type of bullheaded, unfortunately. <laughs> well, not as much bloodshed as I would like, but at least there's some chaos there. Oh, this chaos is much more than bloodshed, and it'll be much worse before it ends. Oh, let's not go into making wild accusations. Oh, Eurymedes, I, I appreciate your accompanying us. I don't think that uh, you need to join us for this portion. And he looks, you know, blushes a little bit. Uh, of course, I, I will send for you if you're needed. I'll just mouth thank you to Elitus. <laughs> as soon as uh, you guys have stepped a far enough away, and he goes, Eurymedes is a student of Drakios and obviously spy and a plant and everything else. So I will have you know, if you said anything on the journey here, it will be in Drakios's ear within the hour. So. Well, it's fine. Regardless of what it is that whatever we've said during the journey changed as soon as we realized that we were just the decoys. Did they send for an equally eclectic party for the Oracle? Or was it just soldiers? Because... Um, it was primarily soldiers. Yes, I agree. Yes. I'm just wondering, I believe it was Vara and Adrastos who saw the harpy circling overhead when we made camp that one time. Yes. Did they tell anyone else about that? Yes. Okay. We let the people who were following us on watch know. Okay, and were the was the harp still circling overhead when we talked about the oracle being weird? We noticed it on our watch and pretty much immediately dealt with it. So, okay. um, I don't think it was present for any conversations unless okay. we hadn't seen it before and none of us know. Okay, sorry, just wondering for reasons. So just having two very such varied parties and two wagons you don't think someone could just take a wild guess uh, an entire group uh, of people that just conduct themselves like soldiers yeah. versus us well um honestly uh, um this way and he kind of leads you down a hallway uh, because you were about to walk right past his his office area, and he's uh, this way, this way. Um, well, honestly, uh, I think Dracios's whole idea of putting you on the wagon was he assumed that you would be killed, and he's still angry with you, um, and probably will be of for uh, well, um, no, no further than eternity, I would assume. Um, in here, please. And the door opens, and you enter into this large. It, in any place else, it would be a great hall. But there are tables everywhere. And there's just room in between the tables to be able to walk. And each of the tables is stacked high with paper, with scrolls and papers. And all over the room, there's just large mountains of documents everywhere. Welcome, my buff. Um, Still very, very busy, I see. Well, uh, since you've been gone, I have taken over. Uh, I am now responsible for uh, collating 
uh, and judging all information that comes in. So uh, as you can see here, uh, please don't mess with anything. And he, as Tikaros, you know, can't help herself when she starts going for little pieces of papers. Uh, please, please don't mess with anything. There's a filing system to everything, and I'd prefer you not. Um, can I just, can I just go through and have a look then? Just, just a little wonder. Later, later. Okay, and she'll hang back and still go off if she can't be seen. <laughs> That's what I figured she would do. Uh, give me a stealth check. Okay. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's dirty 20. <laughs> uh, you are able to uh, grab a couple of different pages off of a stack and kind of secrete the, uh, the scrolls into your shirt so that you can read them later. And Elatus uh, leads you to a large table that is relatively clean. Uh, so this is obviously his work table. There's a few chairs around it and a couple of stools. And he takes the uh, the nicest chair, the most comfortable of the chairs, and the setup. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't really have seating for centaurs. We don't get a lot of centaurs in the research. That's all right. So, um, uh, I will have food brought um, and drink. Pointing to Agrio specifically. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, so tell me, um, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm Aletus Labros, uh, as mentioned. Um, I am uh, in charge of uh, research and collation of information. Uh, what are your names? I know you, Ptolemaeus. Obviously, you don't need to introduce yourself. Most people call me Agrios. And Some people append it with people. the mad. Huh. Interesting. As in the angry or the insane? Yes. Ah, oh, excellent. Excellent. Uh, I'm Vara. Vara Tideborn. And my head pops up behind a stack of papers. I'm Tikaros. Hello. Uh, yes. Uh, if you would, please put that paper back and come over here. I said you could look later. Please. No, no, no. Put it back in the stack you took it from. But I still got some. <laughs> so please come sit down. Sit down. Sure. I'm obviously going to have to keep an eye on you as he he looks and he can just kind of tell you've got some things in your cloak and just remember what stack they came from please okay all right now what was the message you received from your god oh me that's me yes ah uh. I I'm sorry, I, I have a tendency to just stare off into space when I talk, and uh, I don't speak to people very often, so I, I apologize. Let's see. Um, uh, did the, did any of the rest of you speak to your god? Not yet. Okay. Yeah, then yes, you, you sir. I agree with us. Mm. The most recent one would be that he wants me to find whoever is trying to pin this on the gods. In reference to the attack in Near Lantern. I want you to find whoever is trying to. What were the exact. Were those the exact words he said? Um. I think they were pretty close. Close. Okay. It is my will that you find whoever tried to pin this on the gods. Right. Excellent. Excellent. Um, and um, when you get these messages, is it um, a voice, a vision? A Does voice. Does Mogus often... appear to you? Oh, sometimes a vision, yes. Mogus rarely appears to me. But often I hear from others that a voice emerges from me, his voice. Interesting. Did any of you 
hear his voice when he received it. Were, were you nearby? I'm sorry, were you, was anyone with you or do you have to be alone when you receive these messages? I don't have to be alone, no. I can have others with me. We had another, we have another companion with us that did hear the message. Fortunately, they're not here right now. But um, something this to do with the returns be... and everything. This would be, um, I believe, the Leonin and the warrior. Yes, the right. Leonin. Yes, okay. Um, are they planning to come join you? Because if not, the council will be sending soldiers to retrieve them. They will. They will. They were, we mentioned to them that we were going to meet in Melitus. They have their own map as well. I, I couldn't help but remember, though, Agrios. What was the other, what was the other prophecy that you had? Uh, Agrius well, struggles, sure. struggles to remember as his player forgot to write it down at the time and wrote what he <laughs> thinks it was roughly a little while later. Uh, 31 deaths, 31 something deaths. Al something along the lines of the death of the 31 will not justify the death of the... 13, I think. The, wait a minute. Death of the 30? Death of the 31? There was a lot more than 31 deaths in, back there in Neil Lantern, so I assumed that that 13. particular one might mean something else as well. You said 13. And 31, yes. Um, very, very interesting. Um, and you said there were more deaths than 31. Now, was that the, ex I, I hate to be so pedantic, but was that the exact wording? Are you sure you, Probably the words not, are correct? No. Oh. Wait, there was, oh. there was something to do with the sun. Was it deaths of the sun? Is that right? I don't know. I don't, I'm trying to remember, but I remember I would sun appreciate. I would appreciate if you could think on that and, and see if you could come up with uh, more closely. Is there anything I can uh, roll to recall the exact wording of that prophecy, Tam? Uh, if you have abso it. Absolutely. Um, just roll me an intellect because you're going to be searching your memory and uh -oh. what you memorized of it. Oh boy. Uh oh. Yeah. I want to try and guide you because I'm trying to. Can I actually? I do. I do have guidance. Uh, I, can I cast I, the guidance cantrip on myself first? <laughs> uh, while while that. Am I able to just kind of look at Agrius? Just as, this is fairly important. We should just dig deep. I know you could think about it and give him a bardic inspiration as well. All right. My word. So I've got my, <laughs> just I've got my D4, and then I've got the D6 bardic inspiration, and I've got my D20. Let's see what we get. Oh, come yeah. On. Come on. Something good. Oh, damn. That's actually pretty good. That is 23. <sighs> All right. You think on this and you remember it being a statement. It, it starts coming back to you. Um, 31, it wasn't 31 deaths. It was sins. It was something about sins. And that the deaths would... The deaths were only the beginning, and it was would account for the sins. Wasn't that it? The 31 deaths would account for the sins of the 13. Oh, I think we've The 31 okay. <laughs> deaths will account for the sins of the, th of the 13. Interesting. 13. And who are the 13? <sighs> He didn't tell me that part. No idea who. I find it interesting that 31 is the reverse of 13. I wonder if there's something yes. in that. So, and uh, let's see. Uh, reports. Reports. Um, um, you, um, uh, Tigros, please go to the third table over there, second stack, and uh, out midway through the stack. Uh, just grab the paper out of there, please. Sweet. She runs. Just knocking papers accidentally as she goes and does the best she can with that instruction. 
All right. You pull a paper out and he goes, yes, that's exactly the one. And as you bring it over, he goes, um, let's see. Um, the temple, it says inside the temple, there were 30 worshipers. So that would be 30 people who died inside the temple. Ah, and then that one, uh, other centaur, right? The, the centaur. Centaur. Okay. Well, that An would be the thirty. Was that would be thirty-one then. Within the temple. The reason why I mentioned that it would be a bane instead of a boon for for the oracle to be killed by Mogus is the fact that from what I remember the oracle was just about to give its own vision its own prophecy when all of this happened whatever words she was to speak never came out interesting okay so um you mentioned something about um a hand two as i would remember there were 10 10 markings so did you see a hand or did you see markings i'm trying to understand it was and he's he's furiously taking notes as you're saying all of this from what i saw initially there was just the lights and then everything was crushed as if it was under a palm of a hand or two hands so just the ten lights if you were going to go specific about it of course yes and then when Vara and I were underground, I saw a fingerprint appear before it crushed the centaur. A fingerprint? A, like... a fingerprint. That was right, Vara. Did you see it as yeah. well? Yes. Um, looked like a fingerprint. Kind, yeah. kind of what we saw on the outside as well. Oh. So, I mean, a small little... How did you see this? I mean, was it right in front it of was, you? Or? Oh, it was large. It was quite large, oh, on, the, large. on the structure itself. Large fingerprint. Interesting. But it, it, it seemed intentional in a way that um, it helped lead us to believe. I, I understand most gods can see just about wherever they please or, or have people in different places, but uh, the actions of the hand in terms of when and, and how it interacted with the building seemed very intentional to try to kill the centaur, as if the person doing it either just wanted the most destruction or was there themselves to bear witness. Um, it, it's part of why we bring up the whole impersonation of the gods. It, it very much seemed like the actions of, of someone who was trying to frame them or, and, and be there and present, wanted, wanted their actions on display. Sikros, didn't you mention that there was also another satyr the one that was saved by the by the centaur yeah in what, some describe describe this satyr uh, they had gray hair um rather rather small and meek i don't remember if we got their name no what if... but they yeah they had some children they were protecting or something at the time if, if so they were alive. If, I was going to mention the fact that there was supposed to be 31 deaths and the, cent the centaur had to be the extra one because there was 30 deaths in the temple. Then that meant that she might have replaced the, the satyr that was there. Maybe there's a correlation. You said, you said gray. Um... And he's about this tall and begins to give a description of this satyr that is a perfect match for what you saw. Yes, that, that sounds right. Good. I was I was afraid that I was afraid that he perished. 
um, someone you know. Yes, um, it's one of my research assistants. Uh, they work in places um, secretively and collect information. Sent it back to me. Um, I had not heard from them since the collapse of the temple, so hmm. I was concerned that they had perished. Did you happen to notice that were they carrying, and he pulls out a stone that has markings on it, did you happen to notice if they were carrying a stone similar to this? Um, I don't believe so. It was it was it was very dark, and we were just trying to get them out, so we didn't really take much time to take in the scenery. But Tikaros, I mean, you're fond of those kind of little trinkets. Do you remember that? She thinks really hard. Does she remember anything? Uh, I don't think she saw like anything. To check and see if you remember anything, or if you want look. to assume. Either way is good with me. Oh, uh, I'd love to check. Uh, give me a history check. Ooh, that could be interesting. Actually, it should be intellect it's... too, but I'm giving some credit here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's an 11. All right. Uh, no, you don't recall anything about this. Uh, you remember having to pull the satyr through the centaur's legs to get them out. Uh, and so there was more focus on that, but you don't remember them having any possessions. Yeah. Uh, because the next thing that you remember is the centaur being squished into nothingness. So. Uh, well, um, that explains They're very adamant. Happened. They're very adamant about the 31 deaths. If... If he was, if the center was crushed at any time prior to rescuing the satyr, that would be 32 deaths. True. So whatever that was doing all of this was actually monitoring the entire situation as well. Monitoring or was it a premonition? I mean, you said that it was a, a message from Mogus, did you not, Agrius? I did, yes. Well, Tigros... How, how did it happen? What was the timing of it happening? Was it, was the centaur unfortunately crushed right immediately when the satyr was out of harm's way? Yes. That is what happened, because, yes, I ran, got through the legs and pulled and pulled and pulled, and then it happened. As soon as they were free. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying, Ptolemaeus, is it was very important for the prophecy that was given by Mogus to be accurate and correct. Someone was making sure that it came true after the fact. Why do you think Mogus is involved in this? Why would Mogus want to destroy the Temple of Heliod? Mogus did not destroy the Temple of Heliod. But the permonition came from Mogus, and Ptolemaeus yourself, your logic says that it was no. watched very closely so that it would match that, and if it, the only one who made that premonition was Mogus through your friend Agrios, who else would have known? But the wording was not necessarily mentioned. The actual culprit wasn't mentioned. The 31 deaths was nothing to do with anything other than the sins of the 13. I would actually say the logic dictates that we need to look towards who this 13, who these 13 might be. Agrios, do you have any way of opening communication with Mogus, or is it purely out of your control? I mean, could we oh. ask for some clarification? All I can do is entreat him to offer his guidance. I have no real control over him. He is a god. This is a big city, though. 
there must be holy people here we could ask or get some help or direction from. Well, there is every temple. I mean, Mogus has a temple. Yeah, perhaps we could try to speak to him and, and clear things up. Yes, well, that's, that is a that's very a, good idea. Let's 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 have our meal first. And as he says this, you see that people are bringing in in food. Um, a few more questions though while we eat. And he begins to ask questions about the events surrounding what happened starting in the morning. So he's going through all your observations of everything that you did. Um, leave out no no details left out. Uh, I need to know everything, even the smallest of things. So I'm going to ask each of you, how open and honest are you with everything that happened to you that day? Agrios has no reason to lie. If they take umbrage, all the better. Okay, very good. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I'd say Vara is just complete honesty at that point. Okay. After, after the discussion that had been outside, she wants to just tell them all the truth. Excellent. All right. Olimaeus? Uh, I think I would spend a lot more time on the insights I may have of kind of like more logical insights of, of everything rather than just to give uh, like a play-by-play a -play of what happened during mm -hmm. the day. He'll leave out things like, oh, I was dragged along by, by the, the warrior lady and stuff like that. He'll leave <laughs> out the drinks that he had with his friends. He'll leave out specific, those things that he doesn't deem to, to mean anything and just focus okay. more on his insights. Okay. And Tikoros. Probably the complete opposite of that. She will tell everything. The the uh the stealing of the ink, the what she had for breakfast, focusing so much on the battle plot and how much it's gonna just make their battles like so important and bond them together as a group. But also she doesn't see any value in holding anything back at this point. Nothing seems important enough to hold back. Okay. So she's just be honest. He, as you're telling him the details, Tikaros, and she's just rambling on, he asked the, the littlest details about what style of braid did you use? Did you over un I mean he gets into the details of everything. He asked you about the ink. Uh do you mention that you gave the ink to the Minotaur? Yes. And he's gonna ask you why. Why did you give him the whole jar? Why did and just all these questions about it, just trying to understand why you did things. Alameus, for you, however, since you decided not to be fully open and everything, I need a deception check from you. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. I think I think uh partially the reason why Ptolemaeus would do this, I would do this is also because I know how much question how many questions there would be about all the little details and didn't want to bother with answering some of those. That is 24. 24. All right. So he just continues uh, listening and he takes what you said and, you know, glosses around. And after a few minutes, you hear some very heavy footsteps coming from the stacks of paper. And this very tall, probably about seven foot tall, bulky, Looks looks like the heaviest armor you could think of that is roughly crafted. It's not smoothly beaten. It's it's but it covers everything. All joints, everything about this person is completely covered in this armor. And uh steps out and I am concerned, Elitus, that the one named Ptolemaeus may have left out important details. Some things in his story seem to leave gaps. And Lita's turns. Um, thank you, Prime. Ptolemaeus, you of all people know the details are what matters. The smallest of things can have the biggest importance, whereas the large boisterous details can mean nothing 
I mean, yes. listen to a speech of Dracius. This is true. But also, you of all people know that I understand which details are important and which details mean nothing at all. You understand, Ptolemaeus, that um, I have always been willing to listen and debate with you. But, and I, I mean this as, as kindly as I can, um, you are not an equal. And no. you do not have the option to make the decision what is important and what is not. That is up to me. I am the collector of information. And you are to be truthful. Fair enough. Um, However, I would ask that I keep one thing to myself. My final conversation with a dear friend of mine. Just for his, for his honor. And respect for, now, for my own. For now? I will say, okay, but if it comes important and there might be a detail in there, if we have a gap in the puzzle and we cannot find the piece, I will it may tell be that all. very conversation. Yes. I'll tell, I'll tell him about the, the, the other stuff as well, except for mm -hmm. just the, the last uh, little debate I had with my friend. Okay. And he's like, uh, I agree, the, the details may not be that important, but who knows? The drink that you may have spilled on the table could have run onto the ink of a scroll and changed the orders of an officer who was supposed to be in the temple, and then it would have been 32. Remember, the small details matter. Um, but that is that's the part that, that was the part that I was mentioning, specifically. It should have been 32. It should have been 32 simply because the centaur was there when she was not supposed to. Or she was supposed to be there. And, and then the satyr wasn't supposed to. In any case, there were 32 people in the temple, but only 31 was killed specifically. I think we'll have to come back on that one. Let us focus on this sins of the 13. Prime. Um, quick collation. Please look around and uh, anything to do with uh, 13 uh, sins. And I assume, uh, I assume because of the, the 31 sins as well. Um, um, any, any occurrence of 31, 13 and sins. Uh, Cross-reference and uh, bring that information to us. You see as he nods, yes, master, and turns. Can I and help? Walks. Can I help uh, you? Um, he looks back. <laughs> um, do you have experience in reference collation? No, but I'm looking for a mentor. Oh. I'm not sure I'm qualified for that. And he looks over at Alidas. Tikros, I think that it is best to let Prime. You're going to do it anyway, aren't you? Please go help him. Fine. I promise I'm going to be very respectful. And she bounces off after Prime. <laughs> Great. Great. I think what we're going to do at this point, while they're going off and researching, everyone is completing their meals and having their discussions, we're going to take a short break. <laughs> so Tikaros had gone off and was helping Prime, uh, helping Prime as he's sifting through papers and collecting things. Um, so he, he's going along and he's, he begins describing his process to you. Um, I start by looking at which section we have, and as you can see, this uh, table contains numeric things. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then continues on. And he points to the next three or four tables, you know, and goes, and that table is 20 to 51, and that table is 
52 to 75 and then <laughs> uh, but you can also find these here but there may also be a reference that is not by number that's going to be documented over on this table so we'll have to go to a table sins sins uh sins deceit losses failures uh so it'll probably be over on this table and takes you over there and starts sifting through their tables anyway he comes up with a stack and hands the stack to you and says you have done a good job what is what is this job that you do what's it called prime um i collate information i take research that has been provided and I cross-reference it and help build compilations and indexes so that we can find similarities between various information and tie that together. But so honestly, you're a what finder. I really want to do, yeah, yes. What what I really want to do is I would like to be a field researcher. Ooh, oh, you should come out with us. We are having the most ridiculous adventures right now. I would like to, but I, I'm afraid that I kind of do not blend in very well. Um, I am hoping, however, I'm, I'm secretly working on learning magic. Oh. I, would, I would like to learn um, polymorph so that I can change myself into other things. Oh, my word, Prime. She gets out a little disguise kit out of her bag. And she goes, until you learn polymorph, I could do a disguise for you. Okay. And, but I think people will, unless it covers everything, people will still recognize that I am, you are familiar with, I am what's known as anvil rot. I was, I was formed from a creation. Yes, you're very interesting to me. Um, do you think you could cover all of that? And he just kind of does this, and you can see as the joints glisten as the metal moves in his hands. Well, tell me what you want to look like, and I will give it my best shot. And then we can go back and we'll um, see if anyone recognizes you. I, I thought it would be interesting if I could... Uh, Polymorph myself into um, a cart, for example, or another yeah. mode of transportation, because no one pays attention to such things. That's really cool, but my skills aren't that good yet. What if you pick something that's more like your shape and size? Hmm. Uh, well, there's the Colossus of Akron, but. Well, I mean, he's larger, obviously, by about 10 times. Um, I suppose, I suppose I could look like a minotaur. Ah, <gasps> excellent. And what like, about this minotaur that you encountered? You said that he wore a mask. Of course. And she just looks through her little disguise and her pack and all her trinkets she's kind of picked up along the way. And she'll try and fashion some kind of minotaur mask that looks just like the one they saw on the road. All right. Roll me a deception. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> deception. Okay. Let's see. Um, can I use my proficiency because I do have a disguise kit? Absolutely. Or is it just... That's what it's yeah? for. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Excellent. So that... Oh, not too bad. 15. Okay. It, it's reasonable. Uh, so you make a reasonable looking mask. I mean, obviously it doesn't look like it was forged of solid gold, but it's, it's close. It looks good. Um, and so he picks it up and puts it to his face. And so do I look like him huh. or her? Uh, was it a him or a her? I'm or saying they. non him or we her or... They couldn't tell us, so I'm not oh, sure. How sad. Yeah, yes. but look, this is this is them, and I show him the mark that the minotaur left on my arm. Interesting. There's a mark on your arm. 
there was a recent news thing of information came in about people with a mark on their arm, something to do with the plague that had been going around in, in... Oh. Have you ever been to... No, you've never been to the Vale, have you? The Vale. The home of um... the satyrs. Oh, well, I would assume you have. I mean, you are a satyr. Yeah, of course I have. Of course I have. And she's trying mm. to, like, search through her memory, but Yes, of course I have. Um, recently? Mm. Have you had a fever? No, I'm fine. Have you felt like you were dying? No! Oh, then you probably don't have that plague that they were speaking of then. That's weird. I would be careful with the mark. People may misunderstand. There's a lot of concern about satyrs and the plague at this point. Oh, that's terrible. Just yes. satyrs? No other um, creature? Well, it, 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 it came from the Vale specifically. It was around the area of Satessa, but... Hmm. This is good information. Thank you. Yes. Well, um, so, would you recognize me if you saw me on the street? Nope. Hmm. I would think, who is that finely masked creature that looks like a minotaur? Oh, very interesting. And he takes it off and, well, thank you very much, but I should proceed with work for now. But I will look into a disguise kit of a similar way. Maybe there is another way that I could make myself appear as a cart or other form yes. of transportation. I was disguise trying to determine how to grow extra legs so that I could appear as a horse. But then I saw your centaur friend, and I wonder, does he ever provide transport, like as a horse would? Mm, you have to ask very nicely. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. One day, one day, I, I, I hope that I will be able to to master this magic and and teach it to others, and we will be able to form a group of researchers that can go out and provide more of a service than simple, well, servant work that we are normally put to. I, I think it would be amazing for uh, the polymorphers to, to go out and envelope rots in disguise to do research and collect information. This is the best dream. I think it's your destiny, and you just have to keep going for it. I believe in you. So with this, they're talking and going and make their way back. And um, Ellie just looks over. Uh, please, um, the papers. And so he takes the stack of papers from Tikaros and begins going through it. And <laughs> interesting. Uh, I see current news in here as well. Um, let's see. Fighting between the Minotaurs of Phoboros and the returned of Odinus. Um, apparently the Minotaurs have heard a rumor that they're, they either heard or they're promoting that the undead are contagious. Have you heard any, was it, no? Uh, a story that apparently made its way into Melitus from sailors. Um, you had mentioned pirates. Uh, have you spoken to any sailors who have heard anything, uh, Farah, referring to... <laughs> Contagious undead? Um, no, not, not that I recall. I mean, it's been... The seas have been relatively uneventful recently. It's part of why hmm. I was finally drawn on land. Interesting. Um, what type of... What type of... In, infectious? I'm afraid there's not enough detail on it. It's just a rumor from sailors and statements being passed on from the minotaurs and minotaurs aren't known well for carrying deep details in their conversations it's usually blood crash smash death ah my favorite would i have heard yes. anything about uh the un uh, this sort of undead plague from phoboros from my time there uh if you would why don't you uh give me a uh let's go with uh history since we're talking about conversations and things you may have had. 
<clears throat> uh, that is a 10, so probably not. When was the last time you were in Phobos? I, let's see, I was thinking that I went to Neolantin from Phoboros. That was where I was last. Okay. So, so within a, well, within a week before the Heliod thing, maybe? Sure. I mean, Somewhere in there? Okay. They're, they're pr it's pretty far f north from Neolantin, so I don't know if I could have gone all yeah. that way in a week, but maybe. Depends on if you were on foot or on boat. But anyway. Uh, so well, no, you 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 haven't heard you haven't heard this rumor. So it may have been something that came up because there was no big fight going on between Phoboros and Odinos when you left either. Right, 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 right. So true. Uh, okay, so let's see. Uh, a shipwreck in the South Lindus River. Sailors reported a gray and dead world with creeping creatures that would devour a soul. Is this correct? A devour a soul. Oh, I see the note. Uh, it is assumed they, they landed in the Heto Mire, so they may have just been in the wrong place. But interesting to match that sailors and a shipwreck, referring to undead being contagious. That may be something to view. So he sets that up on a stack on the table. Um, orphans and refugees have been arriving at Satessa from the southern woods. News in the Cypress Gates that a plague has broken out, infecting satyrs in the Vale and villages to the south. Hmm. Are, are there any to details the on? Are, are there any details yes. on what uh, what the plague looks like exactly? I know you said it's undead. Are they um, are they rotting? Is oh no no, but well, these aren't necessarily the same thing. Satessa is not anywhere near Odinos or Phoros. Oh. Um, so it could be a different plague. It's the Minotaur saying the undead are contagious, which could be a plague, um, a plague of contagious undead. That's an interesting thought. Um, yes. This plague, um, this plague, uh, details of um, black spotting and lines and ugh, oozing. Hmm. Interesting. Definitely even though it doesn't sound fun. Even though we could say that it's just two plagues, the fact that what were the times that these were reported? Were they uh, reported at similar the times? Satire plague, um that sickness has been going on for oh, oh well over two months that it's been oh. known. It's apparently gotten mildly worse. Um Many people are avoiding satyrs in that, that area. Uh, in fact, it says here that uh, satyrs will be not... Oh, satyrs may not be allowed at the Iroan Games. Oh, interesting. Uh, oh, no. This wow. is terrible for me. Oh, another cross-reference. Uh, Iroan Games are preparing in Akros in four days. Is it almost... It is almost time. Four days. So um, let's see, the first day is the festival. Oh, we have the festival of Thrambion, which will be happening here in Melitus, and from there will become the procession uh, to the games. Um, was not a member of your group. Two. Two. Oh, well, okay. One, one and a coach, I believe. I don't know if they yeah. were actually going. Ah, there's Both a note. Right there is a note here. <laughs> Oh, I see. There's a note here. Uh, keep your eye on a particular young centaur. She has excellent in weightlifting. Uh, yes, that was the 31. Very strong, apparently. That was the 31. Oh. 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 She was okay. strong in weightlifting. She was reportedly lifting the entire building up. Yes. <clears throat> She was holding up her room from collapsing. That's why we were able to save your uh, researching friend. But that is interesting that they took out someone who had such a strong holding and, and opportunity at the games. I wonder if that could be an effect as well. Something to think and keep an eye on for cross-reference later. Yes, uh, well, I mean, it uh, seems so like 
what's been done was was done in front of an audience, right? I mean, this festival, many people to to view and, and potentially be caught in the destruction. Um, perhaps this was only a lead up and perhaps any future festivals or even the games itself is being targeted. Believe. interesting point Vara. interesting yeah. point i will make a note be sure to bring that up to the council when we meet with them again that that's something to be very concerned about I, if of course any of this pans out to be anything other than the gods which obviously we can't do anything to stop the gods i do want to point out though is there any reason well not necessarily that if there's any reason for us to go back to the council but is there any reason for us to understandably be not not be accused of things that happened I, um i don't know that you're being accused of anything do you feel as though you have been accused I, not necessarily that we've been accused but more so that we've been rather targeted in a negative manner specifically agrios and his god <clears throat> it's really they were just quite rude I'm used to that. I'm not, well, so... Well, I'm not the, the, council, at least. the council is obviously upset. Um, it is our job for the safety and peace of, of Miletus and, and the surrounding areas. And there, there's much concern that if the gods are angered and, you know, the gods do not directly involve themselves in, in, in daily life normally. A, a sign or a portent but destroying a wagon, <laughs> collapsing a temple, you can understand that that has some concern. I understand your point of view, that it is not the gods, but understand, that's your view. And, and many people have not seen evidence to, to, to back that up and make that. Well, here's, here's an interesting little inquiry. What is the council going to do with the news of what happened? Are they going to try to cover it up? What happened with Neil Lantern? And were there no witnesses at all for the wagon oh, it's, being destroyed? It is beyond. It is beyond covering up what happened in Neil Lantern. It's The news has is, is gone everywhere. I mean, ships have set to sea with this information. So, no, no, no one's trying to hide anything. We're trying to collect information, determine so that we can calm the people with a plan of how to move forward through this. Yes, I mean, um, and obviously we're not going to step out and say, you know, the gods are going to destroy the Aeroan games if there is no evidence to this. Well, yes. ex exactly. So I think we should, uh, it, it seems like the idea of someone imitating the gods or, or having power akin to the gods is, is being dismissed, but if if we were to simply say, oh, it must be the gods, then there's nothing we could do about it other than, I guess, pray or, or sacrifice. So I feel like it is best to go forward with this, this notion that it's not the gods, because otherwise we would be idly sitting by for our destruction. If we go along with the idea, exactly as Vara said, that... We still have time to stop whoever's responsible for potentially targeting the Euron games as well. It would be a lot easier to calm the masses, understanding that it isn't the gods that are targeting us. My friends, I have no bias in this. No. Please understand, I am merely looking for the evidence to support or Prove against your supposition. Agree. But I will not go in front of the council to recommend an action until we, we have a sufficient foundation to recommend an action. The, so The foundation is, well, what I'm trying to suggest is this. We are not part of your manpower. If we are sufficient, if something happens i agrios already want has part of this in 
involved, involvement and whatnot, but what if you were to hire us to follow this particular lead while you continue on with your bases with the gods being the case? Then we can target both of these potential threats together at the yes. same time and not waste much time. That is fair logic, Ptolemaeus, and it would afford you some protection from other members of the council, if you know what I mean, uh, if you were working for me. Um, we will, of course, have to run this by Pera Sophia. Uh, she is the head of the council, and she will have to decide that because of your recent involvement. But uh, I have the report here of your heroic actions in Melitus. Uh, you fought off harpies? You'd mentioned a little bit, but I didn't realize that it was it was solely you and your group fighting these until the soldiers were able to make their way from the barracks. That's that is that is admirable. Harpy harpies. Um Tikros, dig through that pile, see if you can find a, a page that mentions yes. harpy quality. I'm on it. Oh, um I, if, go ahead. Sorry, go no, ahead, Agrius. <laughs> uh Agrius was just going to mention I don't know what Varro was going to mention. I hope it wasn't the same thing, but um I believe uh some of our group saw a harpy flying off toward the bay. You found that odd. Yes, um that's exactly what I was gonna I was gonna say a couple of things. We've we've uh, encountered harpies a couple of times and if we're going to be consulting some kind of information on them um are they known to speak in groups or, or act in groups like this it, it seemed when one of them decided to leave it seemed as if they all leave left as if um they were under some kind of group thought or control i believe one of them tried to even talk to tikaros i i don't know a ton about harpies i i don't see them very often they don't usually go out very far over water which is why it's quite interesting. We um, one night on our travels, we had a harpy over circling our camp, and we were able to we we tried to lure it down to see what was uh, if we could talk to it or, or capture it or something. And when it saw, um, well, it saw our lovely uh, Leonin friend in all his golden, bright, shiny, fluffy goodness. So it, it was a bit hard to uh, not. <laughs> <laughs> not to uh, get the harpy's attention. And when it flew off, it, it flew quite a ways over water, which is, from what I do know about those creatures, quite quite strange. It would need some kind of place to stop and rest or roost. So for it to run away in a direction that wasn't suitable for it was, um, I don't know, it almost seems like they're not of their own thought. Unless that's normal for harpy behavior, but if it's not, then... Maybe no, I would say they, they they work as a they they're somewhat solitary, but they make they make small colonies. Um, mm -hmm. They tend to hunt solitary until they find food, and then it becomes a frenzy. Uh, Tico, oh, that that page. Thank you, Tikaros. Uh, let's see. Um, so you say that they flew out over the bay. It says here that there was a harpy colony in the Nessian woods. Which is unusual that they would be in that section, um, and they were pushed out. Uh, yes, uh, an, uh, some soldiers from Satessa, uh, because they had been. Uh, yes, they attacked an orphan, one of the children that was being brought there as a refugee. So the soldiers went out and and fought this, and they found a colony in the in the trees there, in the village of. One moment. Um, he says something to Prime, and Prime, you know, rushes off. Um, looking back at the note, yeah, you did say that the harpy spoke to you, Tikaros. And what was it he said to you again? You you couldn't quite understand what he said. Is uh, well, what language do they speak? Because I could not understand it. Can you make the sounds similar to what? I will try. Hey, Vara, okay. uh, did it sound like this? 
<laughs> I that just quite accurate actually. <laughs> yes. Since you're since you are doing an impression of something, let's do a deception check. Alrighty. Because you are trying to pretend to be something else. Oh for good and natural twenty. That's my <laughs> first one. <laughs> Nice. So 23 all up. Interesting. That that almost sounds like abyssal. Which wouldn't be its native tongue, correct? No, no, it would not. And it's also a very odd word in a in, it's it's a rough translation. There's not really an abyssal word for the term. Um Love. Oh. Love. Yes. yes. Um, not not an erotic love, mind you. More of a, a familial. Um, well, I would say the love that uh, between a, a married couple, but then again, that goes back to erotic love. But not that type of love. Kind of that love of commitment. Well, I certainly do not know any harpies at that level. Interesting. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you, Prime. There was a village. Thirteen Sins. There was a village at one point near where this harpy colony formed. In one evening, the village vanished, and all 13 of its inhabitants were gone. There was no sign of, of violence. There was no, there was no remains of houses. It's like, it's not like houses were torn down and burned, it's like they never existed at all. They were just gone. What was the name of this village? It was named after it was named after the the main keeper of that um Avi? <gasps> I mean, that could be anybody's name. I will insight check that gasp. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so insight against deception. Uh, so, <laughs> and let me know what you uh, roll, Picaros. Oh my gosh. Oh ho ho ho! Seriously, I, uh, from a nat twenty to a nat one. I'm oh, not no. even kidding. Oh okay. no. I rolled a 15 plus 6. So Well, I think against a nat 1 uh <laughs> it, 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 with any modifiers, I think your 15 is going to pretty much mean you look at you you realize she stumbled over what she just said. That name obviously meant something to her. <sighs> but it sounds like a link. 13 that's the number we're looking for. Yes. What kind of sins would there be for, for those 13 that disappeared, though? Hmm. It may be something that needs to be investigated. Maybe I can send some researchers that direction. With that, you hear Prime kind of... Prime! <laughs> I wish to go. Yes, I, I, oh. I'd like to continue to help in any way we could. Until whatever okay. this is, is resolved. Okay. Well, we, we will make a note of that. It's definitely something, the village of Tuck. I need to find information uh, on exactly where it is. It may, it may actually require a trip to Satessa to find the soldiers to find out where this. There's nothing here that specifies where the village was. And obviously, if you can't find ruins of the village, it's going to be a little difficult to locate. But definitely. Make um, the trek, but trek to Satessa as well too. 
But first, we need to determine if there is a threat to the Arrow and Games as Vara has brought forth as a concern. We may need to look, focus on that first. Um, yes, I mean, whatever mitigates the most uh, unpleasantness. I, see, I just want um, to be helpful. What's this? How did this one get mixed in? Oh, oh, it's from the, the fighting with the Minotaurs. Oh. Let's see, something... Um, apparently, they're referring to this person as the accountant. There's a, a warrior clad in red armor who's been seen around the battlefields in Oreskos. <laughs> Interesting. Apparently, he spears the wounded. I like the sound of this fellow. Uh, yes, let's see. Uh, do, uh, well, apparently the Minotaurs do as well. Um, let's see, he places a coin in their hand, uh, assuming they still have a hand. If not, he places it on their board. Places a weapon in their hand, engages in a confrontation with them, and then spears them. Well, he cares about their passage. <laughs> Yes. Ah, well, the Minotaurs apparently obviously like him because you know, people get to die in battle. Um, they claim he's not, he appears to be unaffiliated with either side. None of them, interesting. Ah, on the returned, on the returned, he simply consoles with a prayer, leaves them a coin and spears them as well. Is there any information on the coin? On what type of coin it is, or, or what the purpose is? Uh, yes. Yes, I'm curious. Well, I know the purpose. It's obviously payment for the journey. But yes. I'm curious as to if he carries this many coins, and he's placing the coins on the wounded, based on how battles usually go, he's probably spending a lot of coins. Hmm. Oh, let's see. Uh, details a little bit. Thank you, Prime. Apparently, it is a copper coin, unknown yeah. mint. Hmm, I can, okay. can I pull out the coin that the, the gold masked minotaur gave me? Absolutely. And just look at it, you know, not, okay. not covertly. Right. Oh, so you're going to pop it. What is that, Tikaros? The minotaur that we mentioned. Gave it to me in return for the ink, like a gift, you know, barter. May, may I look at it? Of course. Interesting. It's not a minting of any city or state that I'm familiar with. And he hands it back to you. Oh, that's interesting writing on the back. What does it say? Uh, all souls for the journey, come take them. Hmm. So it's and on the other side a is a stylized. I'm sorry. So the coin is specifically for the passage then. It appears to be, and it's on the other side. It's minted with a, a stylization of a. Of a hoplite with two spears. Could it be that this accountant mits his own coins? Well, I assume that would be possible. That would. We must have a large funding of copper. Well, who else would care about um, minting a, a coin specified for that purpose, other than someone who who follows? Um, I'll have to speak with my god. Um, your god? And who is your god, Vara? The, the ferryman himself. Oh, I see. Uh, so you carry coins yourself, I presume? Yes, I, I try to keep a good amount of change on me and, and give it to who I'm able. Um, Athreos, unfortunately, has seen a lot of uh, passage recently, but so I'm a bit uh, strapped for cash at the moment. But uh, uh, yes, I, tr I try to 
to do what I can. I mean, I've I've been in the sailing business for quite a long time. You you, you earned some cash. I'm curious, Vara. Um, this return that you came across. Um, I do believe that the followers of Athreos are not very kindly disposed to those who have come back. Is is that what he is? Someone who's is that what returned means? Is they returned from the afterlife? Yes. I'm sorry. I presumed a follower of Athreos would be familiar with this, and he then goes into and starts reciting the the tale of the return and the path of phoenix and how phoenix died was in the underworld and found a path back but in doing so uh had to give up a portion of himself but part of his journey was fashioning this mask and it was to cover the hideous remains of his visage mm. after returning from the underworld um i i typically have more focus on those who didn't get to the underworld at all but i, I do think maybe i've heard of them i just didn't put it together that that was him or that he was one of those people it's quite interesting well i guess i have much to talk to with Athreus about. Oh. I say, um, let's have a, an evening, and tomorrow, bright and early, we will uh, go meet with the council. Sounds we fun. don't have evidence. Uh, we don't have evidence to back a threat to the Iowan games. So be careful what we mention to them. Sure. Be careful what you yes. say. Very good. Okay. So he will send off some messages to the council to let them know that you plan to meet with them the next day. Um, he spends the rest of the evening showing you around the offices, showing you the different papers and everything, and talking to you about the duties if you do become a research arm of his office. Basically, you're a spy. I mean, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. that, that's what you would end up being as a researcher. Um, so he talks about your responsibilities there and that while you are following up on information, you would be under his protection, but you must stay focused on your job and you must report in regularly as well. So sleep on it and make a decision if you're interested in following that route. So you are each given rooms. They're in the same hallway and they're separate from his sleeping quarters, but he gives you space to stay. And so you are all shown to your rooms for the evening. Um, when we get to the hallway, uh, is it possible? I'll, I'll just I'll just look over to the rest of them. Just could we all convene in my room for a little bit? Just to talk amongst ourselves, kind of gather some information. Sure. I'd love Very that. Well. So, um, yeah, as soon as we're all inside, uh, I just close the door, make sure there's... I, I want to, first of all, make sure there's nothing, like, there's no sp magic items or anything that seems like there could be bugs or anything. And... I don't think I have a uh, locate. Let me see what I have. Yeah, I don't have anything that will that will specifically I can cast a spell for, but I will just physically no detect magic or anything like that. So you're going to do just a yeah. basic uh, look around and see. Give me an investigation check. Okay. Uh, while doing that, can I ask? I was just like, I want to check if there's anything that stops us from talking to each other without anybody else overhearing. Please, let me, help me a little bit. Uh, just in case someone helps us detect magic. But uh, what was my, my investigation is not good. That's a nine. All right. I do not have uh, detect magic, so. Can't help you I don't have that either. Mm -hmm. uh, you look around the room. 
Would that help? You could do that. You could go ahead and cast, cast guidance. I'll I'll retro sure. that. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll help with that way. I get I get two more, so it's eleven. Okay. You still, you're not specifically finding anything. Uh, the rooms are nicely appointed. They have a bed, they have a desk, they have writing implements and lights, you know, lanterns, but there's not a lot of artwork or anything like that in the space, so you don't find anything that would stand out to you as possibly being a bug. Okay. Um, not particularly trusting uh, the area that we're in, more trusting like outdoors and and things like that and just look around just so what does everybody decide to do shall we work for elitis and be research researchers for these phenomenon uh, i don't personally see why not I don't have much thing else. Well, I I always have an overarching goal, but um, it'll run into whatever we run into. So I'm I'm happy to do what the rest of the group is up to. I'm just I'm a part of the crew. I don't work for anyone but my God. Well, it's really only in name. We work for Coin mostly. Mm, Specifically, it cool. is. Coin is useful, and from what I've heard in the room, or from what we've heard, none of these phenomenon are devoid of danger and violence. Also, I heard the word spy. Spies are much cooler than researchers, and if we're spies, we're finding out information just like Mergus wants you to find out, Agrios. Oh. So we're basically on the same mission. Basically. It's true. And That's I want to be a spy. Imagine Although being a spy. I'm pretty sure the reason why Elitis doesn't want people to say spy is uh, it's very, has a different meaning than researcher and a lot of different eyes. But well, we are technically spies, yes. That is how, that is pretty much what it is. I suppose we would probably need to ask about. If we make the decision, we should wait for Adrastos and Ariana. Yes, we agree. Uh, Triapsing around the continent, finding all these mysteries seem like a good idea but to them they're rowing games everything and we might be sidetracked well, ah. the, if things go the way that we're theorizing they might there won't be a games to be sidetracked from that would be nice that is unfortunate but yes that's still the one growing concern the first growing concern at least I want to go to Cetessa. I want to find what happened to these woods, the, this village that vanished, I suppose. Yes, me too. Mm -hmm. But perhaps we be. can find some clues here just for the next day or so and sleep on this and think about it. Yes, I, I think there's much to do in preparation yeah. and gaining information that we can do here while we wait for the others to catch up. So I'll have to do some shopping. Shopping, yes. yes. Stocking up. If if they do give us our stipend for the last job, Tikaros, would you accompany me? I I need to purchase some sort of certain things, and you seem like you're a little bit better around the market. Not necessarily. Don't don't. We don't need need to take anything. We could pay for it, but we we'll probably yeah. require your help. Oh, I love shopping. Perfect. Yes. That would work out then. Um, since we're all of, of like mind, that's really what I wanted to, to make sure of before we talk to the council again tomorrow. Thrown back into the pit of vipers that, they, that it is. 
Yes, if, if they are disrespectful to us again, I, I'm simply going to leave. I hope you all know that. And we would follow. Or at least I would. I appreciate that sentiment. Let's, let's all get some rest then. It's been a long day. A lot of words. A lot of headache. I agree. Does anyone want to go out for a drink first? I'm really hungry. No, I could do that. Actually, yes, let's go. Let's drink. I'm going to pull out my flute and I'm going to go, I'm going to earn some money too. I can play this. Oh, let's go. It'd be quite nice. All right. So where are you going to, uh, are you announcing that you're leaving or are you sneaking out? Oh, I'm not sneaking. Yeah, I, I don't think it'd be a, I don't think we'd say anything, but I don't think we'd be secretive about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Unless we were told specifically not to leave. They just mm. said not to leave the pole, right? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, so then I think we're good. perfectly fine. What could possibly go wrong? All right. Everything. Well, the part, <laughs> the part of town that you are in is the educational part of, you know, relegated to the council and everything. So in order to get to establishments like you are apparently looking for, you're going to have to cross a good portion of the city because mm. most of what you want is over here. Hopefully you can see where I'm pinging over there. I see that. And yep. It's kind of on the opposite side. And where, are where we? you're at and it's it's during the day it's the bazaar during the evening some of the places become taverns party halls and stuff and especially since you are about to enter the party season with the arrow and games going on for the next month there's definitely some pop-up party places happening yes telemax on that note, remembering where we need to go, uh, Tully's just going to look at the three of them. Just on second thought, you three have fun. <gasps> I'm rather tired. Tully. It's. Yes, I do need my sleep. Well, we could bring you back something if you want. Sure, but I'm probably going to be asleep by then. Thank you for the sentiment, though. Sure. I squint my little spy eyes at him, and I want to know if he's really tired, or if he's hiding something. I could <laughs> roll the deception. We could do that deception again. Deception versus insight. <laughs> oh my gosh, out of all the rolls, this is the roll <laughs> that I, I flub on. Oh, uh, 11. 14. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm not tired, but you, I definitely, I don't feel like walking out past understanding that there's going to be a lot of people outside. <gasps> Tolly, I can make a disguise for you. I could too, really, but it's fine. It's perfectly Are fine. Sure. Yes. She dangles some little, like, really cool hairpiece action that she can put onto you. You might get in a bar fight. Do you want to miss out? Yeah, I, I would take the offer. That's that's quite a nice little thing they put there. I I don't know. Is that jewelry? I don't know. I think I, so. I, I think you should take it. I mean, yeah. What if what if something happens? You'd want to be able to see it and and be there. And I'll trust your word for it. That it was glorious. But uh, all right. You three have fun. Next time. And she Next puts her little trinkets away. When we're in Satessa. And I'll kind of look, nod at Agrios with that. Mm, very well. I'm holding you to that, though. Of course. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Onward, then. The three of you set out into the evening. Uh, Ptolemaeus, I'm, what are you going to do? What, what is your intention? Uh, 
I actually do want to go back and re like if it doesn't matter if I have to sneak in or whatnot. I want to reread the the files that we were talking about, we were discussing, just for okay. myself. Okay. If if um, if I was able to just go in and talk to him about it, that'd be great too. But well, he he's he's probably in his rooms at this point, uh, so you could go find his. You know where his rooms are. I mean, he gave you the tour of the place. Uh, yeah. Or you could go back to the study. It's up to you. Which do you want to do? I just want to go back to the study and, and reread the stuff then. Okay. Yeah. And uh, are you doing it covertly or just walking in? Um, if someone stops me, I'll, t- I'll talk to them, but I'm not going to be covert whatsoever. Okay. All right. Well, you make your way back to the study, and we'll come back to that in a little bit. As right. our three adventurers uh, head off, across Melitus at night and there is lots of partying going on uh you you don't make it very far down the street until you start running into people or people start running into you there's all sorts of celebrations going on uh maybe a couple of food fights on the way just to uh bring back memory as you make your way across you make your way past the main courtyard and just kind of follow you follow the drinking and singing as it leads you into the part of town where some of these cop <clears throat> parties are. And you find one that looks really interesting. The place that it's at, um, apparently, well, it, it, the sign on it's been marked over. On the outside of it, it used to say, Balasus, Vials, and Potions. But someone has marked through it and rewritten, and now it says Balash's Vile Potions on the outside of it. <laughs> and obviously this was something hastily done uh, in a drunken scrawl. And there is, on the staircase leading down into this basement area, there is already one person who is laying feet towards the top, head down the stairs, unconscious, with a drink in their hand and they're still holding the drink up while they're completely <laughs> out of it. I like this place already. This is fun. Ah, uh, yes. So you make your way down the steps into the door that is open and inside there is a guy standing at a table who is just taking multicolored vials of things from around and pouring them into a big pitcher. It smokes, it spews, it bubbles. He pours it into different cups and then people put money on the table betting and it is a contest to determine who gets to drink it to find out what it does. (laughs) So three people end up at the counter and they all take a drink, they, you know, slam it down, they hit their glasses onto the table, and then suddenly there are three sheep. And the guy behind the counter goes, <laughs> uh, okay, okay, we can do better than that one, we can do better than that one, and he starts mixing some stuff up, and who's next? So what are your yeah. partners going to do? Yes, agree right. us. How many gold do you bid? Uh, what's what? What do people around him seem to be bidding? Uh, the people that are around the table right now, there are ten gold each on the table. Uh, that is the total amount of gold that I currently have, and I'm gonna put it all on the table. Yes. <laughs> all right. I see ten. I see ten. All right. And he holds up this vial, and it's got this. Just it looks like squid ink. It's just this thick black. And he goes, Come on, come on. Another gold. Come on, another gold. Come on, I found I'm this out. one on the back shelf. So I don't even know what me. it does. <laughs> I'll I'll go ahead and hand a coin. Yeah. He puts it on the table. All right, you're in. Anyone else? Anyone else? I'm the cheer squad. Coins down. 
Agree. He you takes got and this. he he takes you know and what? he pours the. Oh. Sorry. I'll, go ahead, uh, Marla. I would like to join in in some friendly competition, and I will go stand right next to Agrios and lay down the same amount of coins. Ah, good. Excellent, excellent. He pours out the pitcher into three cups, and then he takes and he starts to pour this out, and the liquid kind of goes over the edge, and then it's almost like it's trying to hang on. It's almost like you see little tendrils as it tries to hang on instead of dripping down into the cup, and it... And a little drop goes into each cup. And as soon as it hits it, the entire contents of the cup and the cup itself become just jet black. And he, he puts the cap back in the, the thing and goes, um, yeah, okay. Um, I'm sure there's an antidote uh, if, if anything goes wrong. Uh, I'm just going to, in anticipation of this, I'm going to go ahead and, if I may, cast aid on myself and Vara um, <laughs> for some temp HP. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. All right. And around you, the chant starts to go up of drink, 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 drink. And out of, out of summer up. flute music. You know? <laughs> he starts drinking. Well, All right. Fire drinks as well. Tosses it I back need... in a single gulp. <laughs> Excellent. I need constitution saving throws from both of you. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Do I not have bless? Of course I don't. I only have bane. Wonderful. <laughs> How much temp HP was I given, by the way? Uh, five. <laughs> I want to make sure I know beforehand. Con save? Yep. I rolled a 10. I oh. also rolled a 10, but it's a 13 total. Yeah. All right. Very good. Um, I need both of you to roll a d10, please. <laughs> Mighty. I rolled a four. Okay. I rolled a six. All right. Vara, you drink this, and then all of a sudden you, you feel like you're going to be sick for a moment, and you feel it building up, and then you let out this enormous belch, and as she belches, her skin turns purple. Oh. <laughs> and when she belches, little orange bubbles come out. And uh, Vara, you are afflicted with this, and it will remain for the next the next five hours. Your skin will be purple, and you will continually belch orange bubbles. <laughs> Agrios, you rolled a six. You feel odd for a moment, and then you feel extremely off balance. And you actually fall down onto the floor and realize, number one, you're not wearing pants. Which it's never bothered you before, but now that you only have two legs and you're a human, it seems to uh, be a bit unusual, and the crowd is uh, a, a bit surprised by this as well. And uh, I know how long this is going to last, but I'm not going to tell you. Because I think it'll be more interesting that way. Oh. Huh. No, I'm not going to ask what I was going to ask. Um. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I can I can already guess, it, but go ahead. Did it did it shrink? <laughs> Roll me a D6. Uh, no, I uh... <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Well good. Two. 
Yes. Thank goodness. <laughs> Thank goodness. I know it would have been funnier otherwise, but <laughs> oh, odds and evens. Oh. <laughs> ah, that's unusual. And I assume you were carrying your shield and everything with you, so now you've got all that extra weight. Yeah, you were just yeah. a mere man. Yeah, there's a lot that he has to sort of gather up and. Oh, is he going to care enough about modesty to try and cover it up? I've got to think about that. <laughs> I guess I guess so. And with that, uh, the next round starts going into the pitcher as they start <laughs> uh, putting another drink together. Uh, so having bet, did I, I mean, did I get money back? Uh, no, no. It's it's what goes in, and whoever wins, that is the payment for that round of potion. Uh, uh, but the, the bets are going up. In, the bets are going up because seeing what happened to you two, uh, people are like, ah, I don't really want to be a sheep, but hey, this could be kind of cool. Maybe I'll turn into a centaur. <laughs> well, having no money left, Agrios will sit this one out. The party I mean, goes on around you tapped. for yeah. <laughs> Tikaros. Agrias, you still look really good as a human man. Really good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, uh, maybe we should go somewhere else. <laughs> should I buy pants? Yes, yes, I, I would recommend that. I was afraid you Let's were going to try and jump and ride on his back again, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> low intelligence but not that low maybe just I'm a hoping. nice loincloth I don't want to overspend on well I don't have any money do I let's go get you some pants I can get you some pants yeah maybe we could borrow some yeah, we can borrow some pants and let's just go fossicking I'm going to try and do a little slut of hand and grab some pants from a shop or a bazaar or we'll see what happens okay. alright um, well, this is a, a good bit of thievery, so uh, give me a deception as you try and sleight of hand this clothing out from under the drunken masses and get oh. something that'll fit the right size. 23 with a nat 18. Oh, my word. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You, 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 get him a, you get him an entire set of clothing. What wow. does it look like? Well. It's party times, and I love bright colors, so it's all going to be bright. Oh, no. Yes. I agree. It doesn't like any of that. Oh, you're going to have some green pants, and they've got little swirls of blue on them, and the top's going to be black with sparkles. Couldn't you find anything in red? Mm, heck, yes, I can. And she comes back with the biggest, most ostentatious kind of bolero style hat for your head. Quite nice. When in Melitis. So Vara, as you're right, standing I'll around watching her on. get this and watching Agrios get dressed and you want you once again burp and the orange bubbles come out. Somebody else comes up who has orange skin who burps and purple bubbles come out and they go, oh, ah, Balash is vile liquid. <laughs> yes, I believe we're, uh, we're twins of some sort. And they grab you by the arm and oh. unless you resist, begin it dancing with you down the street. Ah, um. I'll, I'll see you all in a little bit. Um, oh, this is quite nice. <laughs> Vara will dance with them. How do you oh, walk yes. on these things? Oh, sorry. Ah. <laughs> oh I got to hear this. Yes, I agree. Feet are so <laughs> soft. You kick anything. Well. Wouldn't you fall over? I would think so. And I look down at my hooves and go, yep. I would not probably like that. No, not a fan. The little wiggling worm things on the end, too. Ugh. 
So Tikaros, have you uh, have you drank anything yet? Or no, just been I, okay. No, I've just been cheer squad, like adding some music to the to the cheers and the betting, and yeah. All right. So uh, Vara, as this person is dancing along with you, they there are people walking around with trays of drinks, and this person this grabs a couple of drinks and hands ones to you, and starts drinking. Uh, do you drink? Was that to me? Sorry. Yes. Yes. Yes, I would. Okay. Very good. All right. And the rest of you. Uh, so Tikaros, I don't know if you're drinking Agrios. Uh, there's free alcohol out on the streets. Oh, Agrios uh, will absolutely drink alcohol. Yeah, Tikaros would Excellent. too. She would get into the okay. spirit. All right. I already know your two Constitution saving throws. Tikaros, would you give me a Constitution saving throw, please? Sure. Constitution. 17. All right. Uh, she, Tikaros obviously can hold her liquor and she is doing well. She is having no alcohol problems while the rest of you are, well, different color and missing legs all of a sudden. Ptolemaeus, back at the library. You make your way into the library. Um, are you looking for anything in particular? You're looking for the papers you were looking at earlier or? Yeah, just the ones that we were looking at earlier, just just for my own sake to kind of like we we were kind of listening in on Alitas telling us about it. I didn't actually like read it for myself, so I just want to read those over for myself, see if I, there's anything missing or if I could get some insight from it, things like that. Okay, um, a lot of the details he didn't hold any details back. It's what's written on the page, and you can see as you go through these, they're like reports that are being called in and you can tell in some places whatever method they're using to send them they have a limited number of words so they try and put as much information or maybe use abbreviations or maybe even code words to you know document some of these any place that it looks like it's code words though you can see where uh particular handwriting uh you assume it's prime because he's the only one you've seen has you know, detailed it out long form. Uh, and then there are usually some notes that are scribbled on underneath just opinions and things like that. <clears throat> so um, if there's any particular information you're looking for beyond that, uh, it would be basically what you were told. But if you're trying to glean something uh, additional from there, uh, you can ask a question and roll an insight and see if you can find it. Um. Yeah, I would want to see, like, if there were the descriptions, if, like, of the undead, if they had any descriptions on the undead and that plague versus the, the plague with the satyr, as well okay. as if there are any descriptions of the undead that might seem similar to what would have been labeled as the return. All right, roll me an insight, please. That's not the right guy. Let's see. That is okay. Uh, would be a total of 22. Okay. As you're looking through these, uh, one thing you notice is there are little numbers down the side, and they appear to be cross-references. So they, as you analyze this, you, you logic out, it is a table, a stack, and a position in the stack. So nothing is numbered like, you know, it's the 15th document. It's kind of like upper, lower, middle. So there appears to be some, uh, either some type of divining going on or just blind luck when you draw something from the stack. Um, but you do find some references uh, specifically when looking at this about the, the undead, the contagion, and the plague. Uh, you get down to the reference when it's taught on the sailor page, there appears to be another document. But looking at the, the number on it, you realize why it was missed. It's not sitting on a table that would be the proper collation reference. So somebody misfiled this document. Hmm. The problem is, while you kind of understand some of the tables, you don't know what each table is. You don't know how to decipher the references. How would you like to go about? Finding this document. 
I was wondering if uh, on my way to the, the study and everything, it, if there was literally nobody else here, like uh, Prime's gone and and Alice's, they're all they're all just kind of re retreated back to their rooms. OK, uh, the only two people that you really interacted with now, there were probably some scribes and things around. They've gone home. We're prime and elitist. Um, give me a perception check. Let's see if you can spot them. That's a uh, OK perception, I think. Uh, 18. OK, uh, as you look around the area, you see where prime would normally be working. He's got a little workstation set up, well, big workstation. And there were some notes being taken. Uh, the notes are about things about the Iowan games. Apparently, apparently, Elitus may operate a side gig as a bookie because you're seeing several things that look like uh, leads on who to bet on and everything. You do see a note about Myra, you know, being removed and who's the second, you know, loop for the, the weightlifting. Um, but the notes stop in the middle. So it's like there was writing and then it just stops. Uh, and you see no scene of crime anywhere. It's like he just got up and left for some reason. Hmm. Um, I don't know if it's important enough to check up on now. So with that, with that potentially misfiled document in mind, uh, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll kind of keep it to myself and uh, return back to my quarters for now. Okay. Yeah. All right. Are you going to go to sleep or meditate or what's your plan? I think I'm going to go to sleep this time. Okay. Uh, yeah. For, I have like, yeah, 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 yeah. Ptolemais will be kind of remembering certain things kind of going back and spending a little time to process the information that he got and process what's what would be important to him and what wouldn't be important to to, to how he would look about things and uh, go to bed thinking about that all right my earbuds died <laughs> ah. They used to last four hours. The batteries aren't doing as good. Bad luck, I guess. Somebody say something so I know my headphones are working. Uh, hello, something. something. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. All right, I got you through headphones. Good. Okay. Uh, the rest of you who are out partying and drinking until all hours of the night and continuing on, uh, how late were you planning to party? <clears throat> as long as it's fun. Yeah, I've, I've, I'm under the arm of someone else, so at this point, <laughs> whenever they stop. Okay. For me. Agrius? Um, when would I go home? I want to cause some trouble <laughs> first. I want to pick a fight with someone before <laughs> I go. I'm ready to go home. All right. Very good. Very good. Well, let's let's get into that. But the first thing I need you to do is if you've been drinking for a few more hours and things have been going on, let's do one more constitution saving throw. Uh, Agrios and Vara, you are at disadvantage. Ooh. 10 for me. OK. Damn it. One, of, one of them was a nat 20, but the other one's a 15. So, okay. Right. Sixteen. All right. Well, so after your initial uh, burst of strangeness and alcohol, uh, you guys are handling a little bit better. Tikros, what was yours? I'm. I heard it, but it's ten. Else. Ten. Uh, ten. You, on the other hand, are getting a little bit on the tipsy side as things go on. So, um, all of you are, I assume, pretty much staying together. Vara. Unless you're, this person's trying to dance off and go wherever, are you trying to stay with the group while still partying with this person? I think um, 
I think I'll just let this person, I'll kind of get caught up in the whimsy of it because it reminds me of dancing around and messing around on a ship. Um, okay. My, my father uh, played, played, um, oh, some kind of guitar. Um, okay. It's a stringed type instrument. So I'm, I'm kind of having this almost reminiscing, missing the water homesick dance. So I will, I will get fully caught up in it like a wave. All right. Very good. I'm going to roll for each of you and see what the outcome of your evening is. As far as what you plan versus what's, you know, you're going to get out of this. So. All right. Uh, Agrios. As you wander along and I assume Tikaros is with you, you lose track of Vara as she's dancing with this person. But it doesn't matter to you because somebody just bumped into you and spilled your drink. Hey, you little shit. Get back here, you coward. And you say that in this very large, I mean, probably stands a good you know, foot taller than you, broad-shouldered, Obviously, some type of barbarian fighter type person turns around and looks down and says, Who are you calling little? You'll be shorter if I take off that big head of yours. <laughs> Gonna, you know, kind of hit his hands together and, All right. And I need You're to ready to meet her, boss. <laughs> I need you to roll initiative, please. <laughs> Get him, Agrius! I'm kind of swaying to the side and cheering. I did not roll well on initiative, so I'm probably going to take this first hit here. Fortunately, well, let's see. How long has it been? Uh, okay, aid lasts for eight hours. So I imagine I still have my temp HP. Okay. Uh, but I only rolled a seven for initiative. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so this guy is going to rear back and just straight for your face. With a punch. Go for it. And that is going to be a dirty 20 to hit. That'll hit. That'll hit. All right. And that is going to be three force damage as he just punches you in the face. All right, still got two temp HP left. <laughs> is that all you got? Now. Trying to figure out how hard I'm gonna go on this guy if I'm actually going to get lethal on him. Um, I uh, feel like I might, to be honest. What do you? Agrios is going to rear up a punch and then throw it, but his fist stops just short of the dude. And then he does like the one inch punch with the, uh, with the, you, you know, he, not even a one inch punch. He just puts out his, his, his finger and touches him and he casts inflict wounds. <laughs> okay. Uh, yep. All right. Is there a save on this? Um, no, sorry, it is a touch attack, so I'll have to roll against his AC first. Okay. Sorry, and go and roll that. No, his AC is not super high at the moment, so. Yeah, uh, that is going to be a 16 to hit. Oh yeah, that's a hit, absolutely. Yeah, and that was, let's see. 
feel bad because I rolled much higher than I thought I would. Um, uh, that's going to be 25 necrotic damage. Oh my word. I didn't, I didn't mean to roll that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word. The guy grabs his chest, begins coughing and wheezing, and falls to his knees and is just like <laughs> pathetic. And he's gonna look up at you and go. He used magic. I'll prove it. At which a the group around you is kind of going to you know give a <gasps> and a particular mage is going to step out of the crowd Ooh. and he lifts back and it is Eurymedes. Mm. As you, 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 you're, you're in, you're in it is, uh, whatever it was. That looked suspiciously like you used magic against him. Prove it. <clears throat> he walks over and takes a look at him yep you normally don't get necrotic damage from a simple punch uh. no normally uh fist fights don't include magic and uh Cheating is kind of frowned upon in Melitus. Um, if you would like, we can involve the guards. I don't know who you are, but this kind of behavior is not acceptable. All right, so what do you want me to do? Well, first off, I think you need to apologize. Mm. I'd rather not. Mm. Well, then. What is your name? <laughs> they call me Agrios. Agrios. Uh. I knew a centaur named Agrios. Obnoxious fellow. Obnoxious? Yes. He smelled bad. He complained a lot. And he seemed to think he was some kind of a warrior of Mogus, but I don't know. I don't think Mogus would have tolerated his type, to be honest. <sighs> right. Of course, so, uh, if you if you think that you would uh, like to have a fight against someone uh, with magical abilities, uh, maybe you would like to uh, challenge me. Sure. The crowd kind of, you hear a murmur going through the crowd, you know, like a, ooh. Sure, you won't see me back down. Hmm. Well, excellent. And he takes out a shield, but just a shield. No, 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 no. Magic. No martial weapons. Just magic. <laughs> this is a shield, not a weapon. And I use it for magic. You use your shield for magic. 
Yes, it is a holy symbol. Oh, fine. And I am a cleric, um, whether you believe it or not. A <laughs> cleric. <laughs> oh, wonderful. And he kind of stretches his fingers out. And um, If you all could move back a ways, please. Oh boy. Where are so, all my friends, by the way? Do what? Well, that's what uh, I was going to ask. Is what is it going to be? In this moment, Tikaros is not going to move away from Agrios by any means, but she will try and hide herself. If she can, if she notices he's going to get hurt, she's going to be ready for anything. And she's going to be looking around for Vara at the same time. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to, do you want to re-roll initiative or just stick with what we've got? I'd like to re-roll initiative, if that's all right. All right. Let's re-roll initiative. That's much better. That's a 16. Okay, because I rolled an 18. <laughs> Damn it. As soon as it came up, I went, ah, oh, this is going to be great. <laughs> So he just kind of cracks his hand and well you did I think you did this and he takes and he points a finger at you and I'm going to need a constitution saving throw from you. All right. I will do. And that's a nat one. I would think that's probably a failure. Probably, yes. <laughs> I have to find a few dice here. There we go. Okay. Energy leaps from his finger and surrounds you and you just feel this burning across all of you and that is going to be that is going to be 26 necrotic damage well, that hurts i wish it wasn't 26 And he just kind of cracks his thumb and goes, mm, Your turn. Not bad, not bad. Right. Um, well, this worked on the last guy. And he begins to chant uh, again, and then reaches out to touch him. And as you do, he makes a couple of uh, motions, and uh, he is going to cast Counterspell. Ah. And it is going to be uh, fourth level. Okay. Uh... I forget if there is anything I can do against that at all, or if there's, or if that just happens. You can counterspell a counterspell, <clears throat> which I don't have the original spell. I don't because... have counterspell yet, unfortunately. I'm, yeah. Uh, so that's not a thing that I can do. So he counterspells that. Huh. I wish he hadn't. <laughs> and then as my bonus action, I'm going to go ahead and cast Shield of Faith on myself. Okay. Uh, since that clearly failed, I just touch him and it does nothing. And, uh, you know, I touch him and it does nothing. And, and, and then I go, uh, this, uh, this normally works. It's okay. And that's it what happens would... to everyone once in a while. Ah, he grunts in frustration, backs off and taps his shield and, it, and the the symbol on it lights up for a moment as he casts Shield of Faith. Okay. Uh, Tigros, you're observing. I just want to make sure you're not going to do anything. Uh, you're just observing, correct? 
Yeah, but I'm looking for Vara at the same time. I want okay. her around. Yeah. Okay. Uh, go ahead and give her a perception check. Cool. Um, that is a 14. All right. Um, you see Vara, but she is kind of on the far side of the crowd and they are dancing away. So she is about to disappear around a building. Oh, decisions. Okay. I run after Vara just so she knows that what's I want to tell her what's happening. So I'll do that. I'll run after her. Okay. All right. So you're up, Agrius. Oh, wait. Yeah, you did your shield. So you're up. No, you cast mm -hmm. your spell. You were counterspelled. I guess I'm up. Oh, I got to figure out something really horrible to do with you after this one. Uh-huh. All right. He looks at you and he goes, oh, that's cute. Um, trying to protect yourself again. Uh, did that hurt? Yes, quite a lot. Yes. Well, I don't think it's going to matter to you as you spend the next few hours as... Oh, a rat. And I need a wisdom saving throw, please. Ah. Now these I am much better at. Oh, and dice don't screw me. But I screwed me. I rolled a nine. <laughs> um, uh, well, I rolled a five, but that's a nine. The world around you changes and everything seems bigger as you find yourself now in the body of a rat. And not a full-size rat. He picked a small rat. So you are in the smallest of rat shapes that could be considered a rat and not a mouse. Got it. Uh, I suppose that is the end of that fight. He is going to walk over and pick you up by the tail. He's, he will squeak furiously at him and try to bite him. <laughs> oh, nasty little thing, aren't you? Nasty, nasty, nasty. And he is going to take a mug that's nearby and pour out the alcohol in it and drop you down in it and immediately slap a plate over the top of it. Okay. And uh, at that point, you have, unless you uh, try to fight your way out of the cup, which uh, basically we'll consider it grappled, um, you are trapped in a cup for the next I, hour. I do two. try and fight my way out of the cup. Yes. Okay. As you try and uh, wrestle your way out of it, he shakes the cup. But uh, go ahead and give me a uh, athletics as you try to break your way out of this mug. Uh, now, I would give athletics with the stats of a rat, yes. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Need me to look so, that up for you? Uh, just a second. Yeah, because um, I normally have a plus five to athletics. And I imagine it's going to be different for a rat. Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, basically, uh, your strength is a minus four modifier. Okay, so assuming I get to keep my skills um then that would be so from plus three to minus four that's going to be a minus seven. okay so minus two athletics so i rolled i rolled a six <laughs> okay uh you do not make your way out of the cup <laughs> ah, dang huh? uh tikros um let's see how you're progressing you were taking af off after vara so you're yeah. going to be running through and trying to catch up and keep up with her. Uh, you can give me either an athletics or an acrobatics as you try and make your way through the crowd to catch up with her. Okay, I'm so acrobatic. I'm going to be doing little little jumps and little fancy things. Little parkour. <laughs> oh, with natural 19 plus 3, 22. You're running along and you realize that 
because of your height in the crowd, there's no way that you're going to be able to see and keep track of her through the sea of people. So you bounce up and you make your way on top of a table and then you're on the edge of rooftops, kind of bouncing your way around and you kind of lose track of what you're doing yourself. And you are bouncing off people's heads. You, you, a minotaur is taking a drink and you bounce off his mug and force it into his mouth as you hop to the next one. And he's looking around trying to figure out what happened. But you end up at the end and you back onto the uh, cobblestone street. You know, you clack down. And uh, Vara, you hear this noise of this clicky clack behind you. Vara, you should have seen my acrobatics just now. But more oh, importantly, dearest. more importantly, hello, uh, yes. come with me, come with me. Uh, Agrios has been a little bit over enthusiastic. He might have started hurting somebody and he might, oh. I don't know what's happening, but I just thought I'd get you to okay. come. <laughs> um, yes, this I way. can do that. I, I, we probably should have assumed this would happen. Um, uh, my darling, whoever I've been dancing with, it was, it was, lovely to be taken uh taken down the street but i must i must um go attend to my friends if you don't mind oh oh well john um well i see you again and burps and of course the purple bubbles come out um i i suppose if you'd like to my name is vara i'll, I'll be in town at okay. another day or two Wonder wonderful to meet you Vara. i'm i'm denny denny <laughs> <Had to use him. laughs> ah, <laughs> you're a funky looking man, aren't you? <laughs> Do you want to stop? <laughs> All right, cool. And I will part ways with him. All right, uh, Tigros, give me a perception check. Ooh, that's a nine. Um, the voice startles you, you recognize it, but it startles you as you hear crime. And you turn to look, and it's, um, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, it seems there's some trouble with your friend Agrios. And you look over, and you honestly didn't recognize him, but he took you up on your suggestion. And he actually has wheels that he was holding on to, and he had strapped a chair to his back. And he goes, I, how was my costume? Did you, did you recognize me? I, I was being a cart. Ryan, that is the best cart I have ever seen. I did not even notice you until you startled me just now. Oh, excellent. I, That's I, I incredible. had actually followed, I've been following you most of the evening. Uh, I'm, I actually even added a bit of squeakiness to the, to the wheel so, so that it would sound like an old cart. I'm, I'm quite fascinated that it worked. Uh, well, um, would you mind helping me unstrap the chair? Sure. We gotta, yeah. we gotta go help Agrios. Um, yes. Um, apparently, he got on the bad side of um, one of the mage students, and he he really shouldn't pick on uh, mage students who are at such an advanced level. Um, yes, um, but he's been accused of cheating in a fight. Um, so I, I assume he's going to be taken in front of, well, he's either going to be taken to the reverent army if we're lucky, or, um, I understand he was carrying symbols of Mogus. He might be taken to the temple of Mogus and put in front of the priests because apparently, you know, Mogus doesn't care for cheaters either. Uh, one cheat in a, in a fight. You're just fighting. You can do whatever you'd like. Well, um, in a fist fight, it's generally accepted that um, you use your fists and no magic. And apparently there's a chance that um, Agrios uh, used magic. Well, did they shake on it? Were, were, the, were the rules um, it's, laid it's out? It's just generally accepted practice in Melitus, especially when you're challenging a warrior, um, especially when you're challenging a noted warrior. Um, who's preparing for the games and uh, well, well, hopefully, we're, we're hopefully not, he'll be able to participate, but apparently the damage not from was here. quite strong. So I think we have a uh, good case to argue, regardless of how beat up he was. He, he, the rules weren't established. 
Yeah, there were no rules. I was there. I saw it. Mm -hmm. Agrius, so let's, huh? let's catch up to him. Agrius, I'm going to give you a choice. Who is going to make your judgment? Are you going before the priests of the Temple of Mogus or before the Reverend Army? I'll go before the priests. All right. Very good. So you are carried to the temple area, and it is it is late at night. Lots of partying is going on, uh, but you can always find somebody at the uh, altar of Mogus. And are the rest of you going to follow? Okay. So you follow behind. You catch up, and there there's a small crowd, not a a big group. Uh, there is somebody helping the warrior who's still having trouble breathing, apparently. Uh, nobody's bothered to do any magical healing on him or anything, it looks like. Um, and if you had to make a, a judgment on a scale of health, you'd say he's probably on his last hit point. Wow. Oh, dear. So, yeah, he, he'd had a few parties and a few fights before this, so he wasn't exactly in top form. So uh, you are carried into the center of this big room, and there's an altar at the middle of it that is just blood-stained. Uh, you can tell that it's cleaned because there's no flesh or anything on it, but the blood has been so deep and run on this from the sacrifices that are performed here on a regular basis <laughs> that it has become not a dye, but more like a thick shell that has formed over the sacrificial altar at the center of it. And you are unceremoniously dumped out of the cup onto the altar. And you and hear I, the... And I am still that. a rat. You're still a rat. Hmm. And you hear the voice of unmistakably a minotaur. And what, what is the accusation here? What did this rat do? And Eurymedes says, oh, uh, pardon me. And he claps his hand and you are sitting on the altar as a human. <sighs> All right. What did this human do, and why is it a matter for the court of Mogus? Eurydice, um, there was a fight, and it was a fist fight. Under the rules of Melitus, it was supposed to be a fist fight. And this creature here, this, this piddly, scrawny human, decided to uh, use magic. I am no human. The Minotaur looks and goes, <laughs> Then what are you? Hmm. Have the mage dispel whatever witchery has turned me into this. Your remedies will cast a dispel magic. Do I turn back into a centaur? You turn back into a centaur. Uh, the clothing you're wearing rips mm -hmm. and shreds. As you are standing there now, a centaur in a clown suit, basically. <laughs> a torn clown suit. I will suit. rip the rest of it off if I can. <laughs> All right. And you are standing on this altar. So it's not a lot of room for something your size to be up there. So you have to be a little bit careful as you're doing this. So give me a dexterity check. All right. Sure. is 17. All right, you're able to maintain your balance on this. <clears throat> and the Minotaur is going to look up at you and go, Are you wishing to be a sacrifice? No. Then get off my altar! <clears throat> we'll jump off. Looking at you, uh, do you have, <clears throat> because you don't have all your equipment on you at the moment, do you have anything about you that would say, 
I am a follower of Mogus. Huh. That's a good question. I don't think he has it tattooed anywhere on his body or anything like that. Um, so probably not. Right. I mean, he does have, yeah, his face paint. Uh, that's, I think I said it was blood, but that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> so the Minister still with his arms crossed is going to lean in and you've been accused of cheating. What do you say to this? What I always say. I was taken by rage. And by the way, he is speaking minutes. I got you. <laughs> the moment the fool struck me, I flew into a blind rage. I had no desire but his destruction. I take from your words you claim to be a follower of Mogus. I do. And he's speaking a Minotaur back to you. Right. And I take it you know how Mogus feels about cheating. Did you win? I did. Mm -hmm. The fool collapsed. Pity for his loss. Were you merciful? No. Back speaking in common tongue. All right. I understand the failure that has been made here. I understand the accusation. You who claim to be a follower of Mogus. And he is going to backhand you. And you are kind of surprised with the force that he does this with. And it's, it's just going to kind of step you back a couple of steps. He's going to go, he will be dealt with in the ways of Mogus. Now get out of my temple. And he is going to walk over and he's going to grab you around the throat. And he's going to make a show of it like he's just really squeezing hard. And he's going to kind of pull you to the side. As Eurymedes and this other warrior leave. And as soon as there's gone, he's going to shove you back. If you get in a fist fight within this city, I don't care how good your rage is. Bring honor to Mogus. Don't shy his name. By cheating in a fight against someone who can barely raise an axe. You didn't need magic to defeat that. Very well. Get out of my sight, and I hope I do not see you again for at least the rest of the evening. And as he walks by you, he actually pats you on the back. And clears off. All right. Yep. And Agrios will leave. Are my... Are my uh, are my uh, items, my equipment, is that all still confiscated? It was actually brought and left outside. It's just they weren't going to give you any of your weapons while you were under this. Ah, uh, it's outside. It's stacked, it's stacked he, up. He will pick it up and don it again, annoyed. Um, <laughs> annoyed mostly that he was humiliated in public and made to look weak. Prime's going to look up and go, well, that was interesting. Um, yeah. I don't think Mogus is going to be my deity. No offense. I, I think he's good for you. You seem to be quite, um, yes. Um, shall we get back home? It 
Um, I think we can get back in before anyone realizes uh, you left and were arrested and tried and turned into a human and made purple. Uh, yes, I, I think we're done with our festivities for tonight. Uh, very well. Mm. What a great night. It was so good. Agree yeah. us like the rules in this place. I thought you looked so scary, so strong in that moment. Who cares mm. about stupid rules? Yes, and now I have someone to take vengeance on. Good thing those priests are so friendly to me, though. They seemed great. They didn't even break any of my bones. Oh, how lovely. <laughs> Truly a compassionate soul. <laughs> Very. So he will escort you back, uh, get you settled back in your rooms. He will ask each of you to make sure, please, um, don't go out again. Um, I have work to do and I would like to finish. And uh, um, if you could, please just stay here through the evening so that you're on time for the appointment tomorrow. Sure. I'm I I'm tuckered out. Don't think I'm going anywhere. <laughs> and Mara will head to bed right away. Hey Prime, before you go. Yes. Do you know if I wanted to learn to speak abyssal, how would I do it? And can you help me? Oh, well, there are actually several schools around that speak do different languages. It's one of the magic languages, so I think it would be possible there. Uh, but I understand it takes quite some time to learn a new language. Uh, oh. But we can actually, uh, maybe tomorrow after the meeting, we could go search out one of the schools and find out. Yes, please. Will you come with me? Can we both dress as carts? Oh, I would love that. It's a date. <laughs> yes, tomorrow. All right. Very good. So I... I was going to uh, try and do the meeting with the council, but I think we've kind of come up on time and uh, maybe our, our cohorts can make it uh, back for that session next week. So I think we'll, yeah, we'll end here with uh, everybody that. getting over their wonderful party night of intoxication, except Ptolemaeus, who has possibly found a clue.